down a little bit? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Get the air key to wash the screen. Two reasons. Number one is this. 
For those of you who did not raise your hands, I was. Sorry. All right, that's okay. Did you bring the Krispy Kreme donuts? Uh, no. It's a trick question. Does Krispy Kreme try to make the way up here a few years ago and, and uh, Tim Hortons basically booted it back out? You guys remember that? Yeah, there's still more. Still here. Is there still a couple up here? Yeah, they're, they're just I don't want it. They're just. Oh, no, they love them. Oh, I know. They, they, they just uh, give away donuts on Friday for, for uh, National Donut Day. National Donut Day. Yeah, so they're, they're two that I passed. I should go to a lineup. So I just go down to I got to admit, they're, they're pretty tasty. <laughs> Especially when they do the red light, when they turn their silence red, you can go and get a free donut. So I'm on a good at that. But for those who did, who did not raise your hands on the second question, which is, are you investing out? What would you say is the thing that's held you back the most from investing? Like the biggest reason why you haven't invested or invested more? Well, to make money. 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 Yeah. Money's number one. Number two is fear. Fear based on lack of knowledge, like I don't know how, or whether something is wrong. And so what, what I'm here to do today is to teach you some techniques to get you in front of investors. So two reasons. Number one is you can earn more commissions from multiple sources of clients. Remember, don't just work with other occupants. It's, it's fun working with first-time homebuyers, at least for me it was. Um, I love new construction. But the fact is, is working with traditional owner occupants does not help you invest. Would you agree? I mean, you can earn money, but you're not going to gain knowledge on the game of investing. You have to work with investors to be in the game of investing or how to invest. So take on the flippers, take on the landlords buying rentals. And believe it or not, I actually know agents up here who are wholesaling themselves. You guys know that? People thought, you can't wholesale up here. Well, you can. People do. Absolutely. Including agents. Now, there's, I'm not here to talk about wholesaling entities specifically, but I will tell you, um, I am an investor and a broker both. And uh, at my market center, I do allow um, wholesaling for the agents, but we have to do it a certain way. There's a, there's a correct way to do it. Uh, and if you do it through that way, you put yourself at risk, the market center gets put at risk, and of course the clients, okay? Uh, so in any case, uh, the point is, is, if you have multiple sources of clients, would you agree you're generally going to have a steadier stream of cash flow? So, yeah. So in the case of case investing, you have more cash flow and more knowledge. Now, if we had more money and more knowledge, would we probably do more investing ourselves? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's why we have the class. You guys feel like you're in the, the right room? Okay. <laughs> it's not a little class. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so back to this. Oops, we're going to do whatever that's telling me to do. Okay, uh, by the way, the types of investors we're talking about today, not the no money now guys, it's not what we're talking about. We're talking about investors who are typically professionals in the field, often business owners, and the reason is, is when they look at investing, they treat it like a business, because investing is a business. Would, would you agree? I've invested before. Investing is a business. Okay. So, in any case, look at your house. If you could each go ahead, and put your phones on solid mode, that would be great, not just for me, but for your neighbors, okay? And be ready to take notes. Uh, for the information intensive class, uh, my phone class is two. This one definitely has got a lot of content. So make sure you have something to type on or, or write on if you're, if you're using paper, okay? Uh, also, uh, take action. In fact, I'll give you a quote from one of my favorite heroes. Either of you ever hear a guy or go see a guy named John Maxwell teach? Yep, I spoke at Mega Camp last year and also in 2012. That's where I met him. He's a former pastor, too. Actually, he's still a pastor, but he doesn't have a congregation right now. He's just doing a training program, which we really like, by the way. In any case, the quote is not from uh, Mr. Maxwell, it's from actually Conrad Hope, the founder of Hope Hotels, who says, Success seems to be connected with action. Successful people keep taking action. And I know it's a cliche, but it's a cliche that it's true. Think about anybody, either of us know who we believe is successful. Would you agree that they probably don't just put that books on the shelf, they probably read books and implement what they learn. They take action, right? So what do successful people do? Take action. Take action. And when they take action, what do they get? Results. Now when our clients get results, what do we get? Yeah, you guys are so quiet about that. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody heard of me about profit? <laughs> no, don't be shy about it, don't be timid because you'll scare it away. You know, money's, money's a good resource. Uh, not to be worshipped, but to be a good custodian, okay? In any case, uh, you're going to get an email from Beverly. It's going to contain uh, links from today's class. It's going to contain a uh, recording of one of the webinars. I do webinars every week on this subject. And the next one's actually tomorrow night. Uh, the third thing is she's going to give you an electronic version of this book. It's the second of six or seven books I've written on the subject. It's the only one that's ever been ranked number one, though, by my mom. <laughs> 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 so in any case, uh, so look for the link, guys. If you don't see it, just call or email. Beverly used to work for Canada. She now works for these guys. Um, she'll send you all that in an email. By, by the way, 
because I've been here in the region twice teaching, uh, not, not at this market center, and we were, I was trying to figure out, when did this market center actually launch? Does anybody know what year it was? Um, six years ago. Six, six years ago? Okay. Because uh, I don't believe I've taught it before. I've taught it all the other ones, but not this one. However, because I've been in the region and I actually live up here in London, what I ask is this, if, if, you, if you've talked to people who are in the training program and you want to be part of that, what I ask is a kid of your instructors, uh, the, any questions that have to hold those questions the class is over for those who are interested. The class, however, is based on content. We want you to have questions based on content during the three hours of class. Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. All right. So my personal rule is just have fun, interact, and take action, and I'll give you some opportunities to do that today. I have a question for you. You keep referring to three hours. How long is it actually going to be today? It's, it's a solid three hours. It's, sometimes it's hard to get it done in three. Actually, I'll be stepping up in an hour. Do you have a class sheet that you can take names and or what's that? Um, you know what? Uh, I don't need it myself, but I, what I can do is if you guys are going to pass a sheet around, I'll scan it at the end, and I'll leave the original with the perceptions. How about that? Yeah, well, you just contact the front desk. I would, you definitely want to have them have your email because otherwise they will, they're not going to come chase you down. They, don't, they just assume if you're here, you're, you're, there's supposed to be an email that comes out with a link. Anybody see that with the registration link? I don't know. There was. There was. There was. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, if you guys want to pass on a sheet, just do that and I'll, um, what's your first name? Sure. It's Aubrey. 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 I'll make sure at the end I'll leave it with them and I'll stay in just to be safe. That way you'll, you'll get the stuff from us. Uh, from Beverly. Yeah. So, uh, in any case, uh, so my allergies guys are like going absolute haywire. Um, anybody else got allergies too? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I look like I might have got a little bit of a this fight last night. I really didn't, I promise. <laughs> and I'll sneeze, so just uh, bear with me. Okay, uh, real quick, who's, who's relatively new? Anybody kind of new to the business, like in the last year? Right? Have you guys started to wonder yet, is it possible to have uh, your commissions coming in steady, just like a paycheck? No, it's it is possible. Good <laughs> awesome. feel that way sometimes. But if you do open up your license to include additional clients like flippers and mailers, for example, just those three, owners, owners, owner occupants, flippers, landlords, that's the three streams of income coming in. The trick is, is how do you actually do it? Okay, because a lot of us, this is my experience, when I first started off with my license, I would get contacted by people saying I'm an investor, right, and they'll say things like, just, what do you want? I'll say, what do you want? Say, go just go find me a good deal. I just want to make money. Yeah, I'll find me a good deal. Yeah. Exactly. Or I'll talk to them about signing an agency agreement. What do they say? Well, I'm working with four from other agents already. Yeah, just want to get a deal. Okay. You know what I tell them? I didn't. Do, I couldn't do this before. What's your first name? Leslie. Leslie, nice to meet you. I didn't have the the. Um, I couldn't own it back then. But my broker could tell me, he said, "You got to have this sign the agency agreement because if you don't, they won't work for The reason is, is we condition the clients to treat us that way, right? We're always on demand. Call us up eight o'clock at night. I mean, just we've done it to ourselves. So what I would say is this: I say, look, um, I'm a professional. I do, I do this for a living. I specialize in investors. In fact, for those of you that do the vendor training, you get certified. You can say that. You can walk the talk and maybe you're an investor yourselves. And if you want to work with me, this is how I operate. Okay? I'm glad to help you, but I'm not just going to point out the pretty carpet and the shade of rears. There's a lot more to this than that. And, um, and if it doesn't, and it goes any further, you know what else I've done before? I say, look, would you ask somebody to marry you if they told you they were dating five other people? Okay? Maybe today's world, I don't know. <laughs> Things have changed, I guess, but, but uh, in any case, the, the, the reality is this is you are a valuable person and you deserve more worthy relationships. Would you agree? You do. When you start to see yourself, in fact, when we feel, think, speak, and act like a business person, how does the consumer respond to us? Like a business person. So just be that person. You might have to keep telling yourself, like I did for a long time, when it finally started working. Okay. All right, another good question. Um, have you wondered, is it possible to have your evenings and weekends free with your loved ones? <laughs> good question, right? Because we're in class, you know, 5 o'clock when our clients get off work, and they've been getting listings all day, popping up their emails, a few that are out there. What do they want to go do that, that evening? You know what I'm talking about? So how'd you like to be more efficient than with your license? More like a business person. You'd like to be more like a business person. Good. <clears throat> okay. Uh, how about this? How'd you like to learn to add another six-figure income to your bottom lines and be on the page to do that in six months? That's the thing you're paying for the class, okay? So this is why we're here. This is not for everybody, okay? Um, I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, um, when I started working with investors, <clears throat> I really learned to like it because it was more like a business. 
And by the way, I never, I very rarely went out to an open house anymore, and I almost never went out in the evenings either, right? It cut that down dramatically. Uh, in any case, here's how we're going to do this, guys. Three-part agenda. Part one, we're going to build the foundational data. I'll show you how to use some data sources that are near and dear to your heart already. And number part two is I'll show you how to uh, identify, attract, and serve <coughs> the right kind of investors. Okay. In part three, if you stick with me, it's a long class, but by the time we're done, you're going to have a building thriving business around this profitable relationship. In fact, who likes that build the business part the best? We get whatever model is in it. In fact, I bet I can find it right up here. Probably right over there. There it is, right there. For the newer folks, uh, we have a model which is we want you to have a business worth owning, and we're pretty serious about that. KW is not about KW. KW is about you and I building a business by ourselves. Does that make sense? And we help each other do that. Okay? Um, so, real quick, this is why we, we are doing this. Before I get into too much detail, would you guys mind terribly if I took my jacket off? No. <laughs> I'm not actually getting that hot, but I just I tend to move around a bit better. And uh, it's going to be comfortable. So thank you. Okay. True pie graphs representing real estate data in the residential world, US and Canada. Okay? First pie graph tells us that in fact 99% of us are focused on the owner occupant. And would you all agree that's predominantly what we do in the residential world? Which means only 1% of us are focused on the investor. Can you think of anybody in your market center who's they're known for accomplish, who's known for working with investors, like that's their reputation? I mean, they're still doing their occupant deals, but their their reputation is they like working with the flippers and landlords. It's hard to find even one. If you know what I'm talking about? Oh, I do. Okay. Yeah. Last well, we'll this question: Do you do you generally look as concerned as most other agents do where your next transaction is coming from? Okay. Most investors say no, and here's why. The mixture of transactions. Now, to be certain, two thirds of our transactions have historically been for owner occupants, which means a full third of our properties lived in by tenants. Right? Now, if tenants live there, who owns those properties? Investment. Investment. You think it should be us or the class, right? Okay. So, what this means is, and by the way, it's still over 33%. It's much higher. In a place like this, it's even higher. Um, but here's what it means though this little 1% of agents over here. <laughs> is getting their big giant unfair piece of pie over here, right? Now show of hands, who just have a little bit of an aha moment when you see these two pie graphs together? It is only when you see the pie like that, graphically. It makes me very happy. As an investor, it makes me very happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm like, ooh, you know, it's amazing. Amazing. It's literally like operating in a vacuum. I can tell you guys, I promise you, if you stick with me, if you follow through later on and you want to do the training too, Instead of letting these land in your lap accidentally, like you get lucky to get an investor delivered now and then, have an intentional business plan to market them specifically the right kind of investors. Would you agree? That's how you hit it out of the park, okay? I, I'm telling you, this is this this is the kind of thing, if you really are serious about your business and you do want to be that business person, you're in the right place. It doesn't mean you can't learn, okay? That's why we're here, we want to teach it. But if you really prefer sunny open houses with hot concentrated chocolates and cookies and balloons, Probably just not the thing. Does that make sense? Just be candid about it. Um, now I do love first time homeowners. I don't want you to get me wrong. If you're young, sweet, innocent, get married and have babies and stuff like that, buying your houses. But I, I tell you, when I measured my ROI early on, where was I spending more time with the owner occupants or the investors per transaction? Occupants. These are first time homeowners. I was spending more money on marketing, and I looked at my income. Here's where my income was coming from. Investors. The investors. The vast majority of it is amazing. So you just just pay attention to hang it, okay? So real quick, a little bit about me. I did actually retire when I was 40 years old. I learned real fast, guys. I was not born to be sitting at a desk in a corporate office. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Did that corporate thing for 18 years. Finally had the guts to do something about it. Got my license when I was 39 years old. You know, last year. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do what we did last year or something, right? <laughs> So in any case, uh, I was quickly on pace to add a 60 year income. In fact, my first year I did 110 transactions, um, 103 the next year, only did 55 the third year because I broke my back in two places. It wasn't my normal productive self. By the way, I'm not a superhero person, guys. I'm about as ready as you can possibly get. The thing was, I learned early on, actually we just talked about it, but the second thing I learned is this is, owner occupants were bringing me about one transaction per client. That was about right, right? You might get a referral every now and then. But the investors, 
Guess how many transactions, we measure this, it's not just me by the way. Take a guess how many transactions you can reasonably expect per investor, like on an annual basis. On a, for those who are actually investing, like they're really doing it. Two, five to six. Which was, it's actually four, four point or something. So, now, you, if, now if you're really good at what you do and you do master the marketing, you can definitely increase your numbers. It's amazing, guys. Isn't that amazing? And it's right there in front of us. But yeah, most days, here's the thing. Uh, have either of you ever owned a business before? Beauty shop, restaurant, pizza, any, any business, right? Would you agree having repeat clients is like really business? I mean, really important business, right? Mm -hmm. And yet, most agents are doing what? Going for the one client, the wow. commission deal. Yeah. And here's this opportunity. You can take repeat clients when you have them. What's your personal budget? Laura. Laura, nice to meet you, Laura. You can, you can systematize things, right? I don't mean like necessarily computer systems, but processes, procedures. When you have repeat clients, file systems, all this stuff, it just makes it more like a business. It's just easier, you know? So, in any case, let's just jump into it. This will start to make a lot more sense. Um, before we get into, you know what? Hang on, guys. I've actually got the uh, American presentation. Hang on one second. Um, bear with me, please. Because we'll get to the next slide and be like, huh, what's that? <laughs> well, I will do that actually. So let's bring this down here. Get rid of that. Did everybody get this? Yeah. Uh, so what I'll do, guys, is uh, I'm going to, I'll scan this in at the end just to make sure I've got it. I can give it to Beverly if anybody needs it. Um, but I'll also leave it with first section, so that way you'll know you're taking care of it. Wow. Anyway. Okay, who is this? Slideshow. Next slide. And now we're going to jump into. There we go, real quick. All right, if you could do me a favor, um, please go ahead and write down one key objective for yourself for today's class. I mean, some of you can learn how, how, more about investing, and if I have time, um, I'll do some examples on here. We have to stick with the content of the class, though. Uh, which is helping to make more commissions anyways. In fact, who's in that category? Who wants to make more commissions? Yeah, we all do, right? <laughs> so in any case, the reason why we haven't write so much down is this. We've actually studied retention rates. Check it out. If you only listen, retention is only 5%. If you take notes, retention goes to 20%. And if you take action, look at retention. If you take action, retention goes to 95%. Gary Keller calls these folks the 5 percenters, the 5 to thrive. Literally, only 5% of us We'll come to class, listen, take notes, ask questions, and do the exercises. Who wants to be the five of five, by the way? Ooh, that's going on here. Okay, so let's just jump into it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is show you a report that we can help you produce. Um, I know it's just school district here, but what we want you to do up in, in Canada is we call it the area report. The reason is is you don't have on your MLS systems sufficient information indicating what school you're in, the house is in. You follow what I'm saying? We wish you, you did, but we don't, okay? Um, what's interesting is I can tell you from living up here, the Canadian systems are generally more sophisticated than the U.S. systems, but the U.S. has what's called our Freedom of, Inform Freedom of Information Act, which makes more data available to us. That makes sense? Privacy is a stronger suit up here in Canada. In any case, this is called an area report. So you know on your MLS you have what's called the area field? All, right. All we're doing is this. For every area, we have two columns, active column and sold column, okay? We want to know by price range how many properties are actively listed, column A. Column B is how many have sold in 90 days. So we do a 90 day look back. Now, I went up here sometimes where your average days on market is, I mean, you literally blink an eye, it's gone, okay? Uh, it tends to fluctuate a little bit longer right now, but we recommend you look back in 90 days. So here's how this is built. The spreadsheet has to be built here in the market center, okay? The data, though, comes from your MLS systems. So, for example, this 35 is a result of me saying, MLS, how many properties are actively listed in this area field in that price range? So, by the way, this is another market center's report. I can't tell what it is from looking at it, but your price range, you're not going to find anything in 100. So your report has to be started at a much higher price range. Does that make sense? Sure. Just remember, everything's relative. We're just building a concept here. So the second column is the same criteria, same area field, status now S, by the way, and a look back at 90 days. Now you're probably wondering, why would we go through all this trouble? Here's why. We do have lots of good reports, given us 
statistics and ratios and things like that. Would you agree? Lots of good reports. But when it comes to investing, we would rather have raw data. Who's the investors again? Would you guys agree if you have raw data, I mean, you can't go wrong. You have the actual data. You got the story. Just let the data drive your decisions and your actions. Is this making sense, guys? All right, so let, let's do an example. Um, what's your first name? Modem. 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 Aaron. V. 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 Oh, yes. Ah, thank you very much. And what's your first name? Alex. F. Alex. Alex. Oh, and Alex. So, by the way, I'm going to make you a, an investor agent. You're now working with investors, okay? Okay. And Alex, I'm going to make you a flipper. You're now flipping hooks, okay? Did you see that? Like, here comes the money now. <laughs> so Alex, Baru, Alex is going to call you up and she's going to say, uh, Baru, I want to flip a home in the South Butler area between 450 and 5. Uh, maybe that sounded like Kitchener, you know, maybe London, for example, because that's where she grew up and it's a good area. The class, does that mean it's a good area for flipping? No, it could be an awesome neighborhood. It could be a beautiful neighborhood. In fact, if you look at the ratio, so there's two buyers in 90 days and there's only one active seller today, that means it's roughly a 45 days on market, but essentially demand is greater than supply. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Now, when you have that, what happens to pricing? It goes up. Okay. Now, if we focus on the actual data, not a ratio, but the data, guys, we would start with that work in that neighborhood as agents. We'd go 100. I mean, look, there's probably 12 of us in here. And there's only one thing for sale. We'd start with that's working in the neighborhood. Right. right? And again, for flippers, have you ever, do you flip also yourself? No, I don't. I don't, yeah. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to flip, right? Because it's glamorous. All the shows are about flipping. Flip this house, flipping brothers, flip flop. Right. Have you ever seen the it's show, expensive. hey, buy this rental property? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah. It's it been for 20 years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, like sleepers type show. So in any case, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The thing is, is this. I've made, where, where would you say I've made most of my money? Flipping or rentals? Rentals. Long term, it took a while, but over the years, way, way more. Flipping, I couldn't begin even to even tell you where all the money I made flipping went, because I would spend it, right? With the rentals, it was just this constant, steady building over the time. And the thing is, that looking back on it, it actually didn't take that long, you know? I mean, it goes by fast, my gosh. So, in any case, um, we need an area when we're flipping. Um, does anybody, anybody flip besides me in the past though, by the way, any flippers? So, we would, would we want to flip an area like this where there's like hardly anything happening, or we would be flipping an area where there's more activity, more turnover? Mm -hmm. I don't have turnover. So let's look at the last area, guys. Look at the uh, second, third, and fourth rows, okay? Seneca area. Between 150 and 2, I can see 28 homes are actively listed and 65 sold in 90 days. Between 2 and 250, 15 active and 39 sold. Between 250 and 3, 13 active and 35 sold. Okay? Now let's just stop right there. We got three price range bracket, right? Between 150 and 3 in that area. Would you agree we have supply and demand? Yes. Yes, sellers and buyers. Now, because we have raw data, we're able to determine what's called volume and velocity. In fact, you can maybe write that down. Um, velocity is a term a lot of investors use to reflect not just how much they're going to make, but how fast they're going to make it. And it applies to the stock market, bonds, including real estate. What was your first name, by the way? Robert. Robert, makes it your word. So when you're, flipping, when you're flipping homes, you probably have a set amount of capital, right? You don't want to just flip one home. You want to flip as many as you can flip in a given period of time, right? It was called velocity. In fact, I would rather, so we're going to, I mean, I mean, for me personally, looking at this, um, that's probably about 40 days on market. There are two to three buyers, roughly for every one seller today. Two to three buyers on days. 40 something days on market. I would rather take my chances here and make 50,000 bucks a flip for Maybe five. Well, we could probably flip. We could even flip six hundred in the area like that with these kind of numbers. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Like that kind of turnover. I'd rather do that five times than attempt to flip something down here at the one and a half million dollar mark, right? Because mm -hmm. once you get past the million, once you get to about one point five, what starts to happen with sales volume? Yeah. And days of market exactly. And we don't want to wait for money. We want our money back right now. Okay. So 
when I first created this out, guys, I didn't, I didn't create this. I found this at the Center. It really did change all the tones. I was no longer flipping as many. I, mean, I wasn't trying to flip the most expensive. I wasn't trying to flip the cheaper, cheapest. I was only flipping where the data told me I should be flipping. And so Roberto was way more accurate, um, like my projections, you know what I mean? I, before I was all over the map. Some of them would do great, some of them, you ever had a flip not do the way you thought it was going to go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I own it now. Oh my gosh, oh, I'm so sorry. It just happens, but, but when you start off with like data, like you make data-driven decisions the best you can, it does improve your odds of success. Now what we can control is over overreaching economic factors, like let's say uh, industry leaves town, that's going to put a hurt on it, you know? Um, you know, but things in real estate really don't change all that rapidly. You just have to keep up with it. You know, you got to keep up with the data. So, in any case, um, so is anybody here actually flipping right now in Toronto? There are people flipping, yeah. No, no, I mean here. Oh, in this direction right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but like those numbers don't reflect Toronto in any way. That's what I was saying. You have to, so your report would probably start off around the upper eights, things like that. I mean, if you go further out, like um, when I was in Danforth, we had a, a three unit. And this was probably three years ago, and that was like 900,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So, is that about right? Is that about the same? Not yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I would do is this if you have clients who are really interested in. Oh, yes, sir. Just going to ask about that, that sheet there that you're saying. Like, I, I mean, I, I get it that you, know, you do want to have enough possible options that it makes sense to look at and spend your time looking at that thing. But do you also look at, like, like the first example there is Hold Well, it says, uh, you know, active listings, like there's nothing in the higher price range. Whereas like in the last yeah. column in the Seneca, you see those ones in the higher price range. So you go, if I put this money in, I can get this back. This doesn't look like any homes in the first one would sell even yeah. you know, over 700,000. It's actually a combination of things. So what I'm looking for is, um, I want to see, I want to see how whether consumers are spending their money, where are they buying? So I can see what the higher numbers, like there's some pretty high numbers here. Right? That's a lot of volume. Yeah. But the thing is, look at the, the buy side, what's sold versus, that's in 90 days, versus what's active today. That means these properties are sitting out there quite, quite a while. You know? yeah. So I wouldn't invest there. I, I want, for me, the sweet, here's my sweet spot. I'm generally looking for about two to three buyers in a 90 day period, preferably three, for every one actively listed property today. Because then I know I've got about a 30 some odd days on market. That's kind of what I look for that view. Is that what you're looking for to? Like the length of time you want to have your house on the market when you put it back out there. But also looking for how many. Because I need to, I don't want to, if I'm down here, like in the example, there's no way I'm going to be too effective down here because there's only one thing for sale. And i got to compete with you in the lockdowns. They're out there buying too, right? So here's another thing I would suggest. Um, don't just stay in your area, okay? I know this sounds kind of crazy to say this, but I learned, personally, this is what I learned. With owner occupants, I had a farm area, predefined farm area, and I wanted to build my database as big as I could in that farm area. You know what it's like with the investor zone? It's almost like the opposite. You would expand your territory and have fewer investors, but you want to do your marketing and you're screening to reduce the number of investors you have to work with to only those that are really like players. You follow what I'm saying? Work with the people that have capital, have income, okay, and have and they're in a field. Like I can tell by vocation if somebody's been more likely to want to invest. People who own businesses understand investing more than people who go, for example. So those are the things I would look for, right? Um, and it things are changing all the time, but it just doesn't change that fast in real estate. You know, not only the stock market, right? So if you think about it, um, what are some areas that are growing right now? Well, it's just I, I think overall, like I, I think sort of at least in Toronto, one of the things that I find you know, difficult when you're talking about flipping versus like buying and holding is that um, the homes are so expensive even for homes that are in terrible shape. And by the time you buy that home and then throw a lot of money into it and then try to resale it and then deal with land transfer tax and all these other sort of things, it's, it's, it's very difficult to make that margin. So that's why I was sort of making that comment a little bit about that. Like, you know, you sort of have to look for places like, okay, I'm going to get a home for 800000 in a neighborhood that normally sells at 1.6, and maybe I can make it work. Right? Well, that's just one strategy. The cool thing about investing is if you keep studying and learning, you'll learn that the flipping, there's not just that one strategy. Like, most flippers think, I've got to get below market value, right? That's what they all think. Is that what you guys thought? I mean, I used to think that too. 
However, if you can buy a neighborhood where, let's say, you don't want to buy a junker, but you can get something that has, you know, 10-year-old carpet and 20-year-old kitchen, you don't just do that type of stuff. You can do things like busting out walls, doing multi-tier decking, doing bamboo on the inside. It's not that expensive, but it really has a big pop effect. Then what you can do is within that market range, you can push the price by as much as 10%. So your margins are smaller, but like, um, you, know, you, you know where San Francisco is, right? Yeah. Same exact scenario, almost identical to, to Toronto. But we just flipped it on there. And we paid about 10% below, what the, the market was about two million. We did get a house for about 1.8, about 10% off. It wasn't like a junker, it just needed, it just was old. So we bought that, remodeled it, and pushed the market by another 10%. Actually sold it for 2.3. So percentage-wise, it wasn't all that great, but dollars-wise, it was pretty, pretty good. You know? Another thing, too, is this is um, don't just think about the extra strategy of selling today, like I'll, you'll flip it and sell it, and you put it back, everybody puts their money back. But you can do things like lease options, right? To, to lock into a good price, give the buyer, once you're selling again for profit, give them time to get their affairs over, and if they don't end up buying it, you keep the option fee, and you can do the same thing over again. It's just another example of an extra strategy. So don't, I wouldn't throw the towel on investing. I would look at what other opportunities there are for for flipping. Thanks for the question. Yes, sir. On the San Francisco property, though, what were your carrying costs, your improvement costs, your real estate costs, your transfer land transfer tax? Yeah. We, we, we actually made only ten percent. We made about we made about one point eight. I mean, one hundred eighty thousand excuse me. We made. Yeah. So also we we generally make when I'm flipping. Well, what kind of time uh, That that was just under a year. Yeah. So now for me, we generally shoot for 30% spread, 10% that's going to be the carrying cost, and the other 20% is going to be profit. That's over and above. Like <coughs> if we buy it, first we figure out what the ARV is, right? Then we back off our 30%, okay? Then we do the physical analysis and back off the cost of the remodeling, and that's what we've got to buy at. That's what we were talking about earlier, the traditional flipping. Now in an area like Burlingame, we were looking to see how can we push the market? Can we push it 10%? And the answer was yes. So it's a different type of strategy. Like instead of trying to get to, to market value, we try to push the market value in areas like that. And you can do that. Um, in fact, Gary Keller says in um, the Red Book, actually, he puts it in the Blue Book too. You want to lead, like see what the market's doing and lead with the pricing and the market. Does that, does that make sense? So if the market's rapidly increasing, you can push it. Don't just lock into the day's price, push it. So the spread's smaller, but the dollars are pretty good. You know? <coughs> That's just one example. But the, the lease, lease option for me, we go out quite a bit in a market like this. Because we can we can get the price that we want. We just defer our payment. And you have to have some capital to do that, but that's another option. You know, you can do other financing, you can do all kinds of things. Other thing you do is what? Remember we just talked about the area? What can we do with the area when we're working with investors? Move out of the area? Go to the area. The area. area. Yeah. I mean, heck, if I was going to make, say, what, 30000 on the commission, I'd, I'd, I'd drive an hour and a half. You better believe it. You know? But I have to work with the right kind of investor, right? I've got to know that I'm going to actually cash in. I don't want to work with the people that say, well, I just took a, a fan mural fortune builder program. All right, anybody know who he is? Fortune builders? He's been up here. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? You know the show Flip This House? Yeah. yeah, that's Dan Merrill. He was a uh, linebacker for the Bears, got injured, and started flipping homes, and he got his real estate license. And guess who he had his license with? Carol Williams. <laughs> yep. But they're teaching people stuff that they're not going into like the nuances of the area. They're just saying this is a general program, and you should be able to do this here, and blah 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 blah. But what they don't look at is the, the specific market dynamics to see what the other alternative approaches are. I mean, for me personally. I'm telling you, I'm not flipping here right now. It's just too much easier. To, it's so much easier to flip in other areas, you know. So if you're are you flipping around right here tomorrow in the area, or are you flipping outside? Or? No, not right now. Yeah. All of my money is tied up in the house. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you if you go outside the area, well, let's face it. Um, you know where Hamilton is, right? See so you know where Ancaster is. Sure. Yeah. Right. Ancaster. Years ago, it was just like most of the community. They're they're out there. Look at St. Catharines. What's happening there right now? Yeah. Well, even um, Hamilton is like crazy. It, it has been for a while. Yeah. 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 Um, where else have I been up here? Way up north of Barry, is that right? Barry. Uh -huh. um, up to going up the lake. Um, 
We have a marker somewhere up there too. The marker? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, I don't, you know, I can't tell you what they're like today, but I can tell you in, in the last couple of years, those are the ones that uh, were look like they're going to So, if there's data sources you can get your hands on, in fact, um, if I have time today, I'll go to the website that the vendor has because I have access to it, and I'll show you some data sources you can use to figure some of this stuff out. I mean, will that help you a little bit? Sure. So, instead of me just telling you about it, I'll give you some data sources you can use. And, uh, some of them you probably already have, anyways. Um, have either of you used JLR before? Yeah, JLR. Uh, let me get through class. We'll pull it up later, okay? Real neat data source, especially for rovers, okay? All right, anything you want to do person. You know what's a really good data source? It's free. Get <laughs> stats. It's amazing. Huge, unbelievable volume of data. Like, did you know you can see building permits and stuff like that? You can, you can see where all the building permits are. You can see where residential permits are dropping off in non-residential or picking up, and that would tell you it's probably a good time to um, maybe think of flipping in the, in the near future. But if it's the opposite, if non-residential is dropping, building some building permits, and residential keeps increasing, there's going to be a correction coming, right? And you might want to look more at rentals. Just little things like that. I'm not, I could go all day long. I just, it just, guys, I've been doing it for so long, I'm literally almost 34 years. I just, my suggestion would be just get in the game and start swinging the bat, right? Just start trying to keep learning. In fact, back to what we were just discussing, here's a really good analogy. The investors would call us up and say, just go find me a good deal. Like we magic and we can just make the market do whatever we want. We, we can't do that, can we? But can we study the market? And, and by, by the way, I'm not like a high C kind of person in this profile. <laughs> I'm not a data person. I had to learn to be a data person to, to, to do a better job, right? So, okay, let's get back to this. Um, Let's move on to the next thing. So how do we narrow this down? Here's what we do. Uh, we actually use Canada Post, okay? There's a, what I want you to do is just to save time. If you could just take a picture of this, this is the steps to follow. It's showing you how to use our marketing program. You don't have to actually pay for anything. Like uh, Canada Post is going to want you to get into their marketing accounting system. I mean, sorry, have you set up an account in their marketing system, do postcards and stuff like that. You can do it for owner occupants. We do postcards for owner occupants. But with investors, we don't use postcards. We just use the data. Okay, so I'll show you that in a second. So if everybody has a picture of this, so you want to share pictures with someone else, we'll get that. We have access to all of that that we track. So we don't need to oh, good. that. Yeah, don't set up an account because we're going to try to charge you. Yeah, no, we, we can. What's really neat is that the, really, the data really does help you. Like if I was working with um, small business owners, I would definitely use this or even owner occupant real estate, because it'll help you narrow down and, and focus your, tar your target your marketing dollars, right? So here's what we do. Let's say we're, we're working with um, a landlord, okay? So these are the instructions. Let me just take you through the, the maps here. This screen's actually all about. Um, what you're doing is you want to see the map. Here, let me show you. First, you're going to get a table, right? I want this, this graphic to be bad here. These are all the promises, basically, okay? You can look at the province level, but more specifically, you can get targeted by using what's called precision target. It's really easy. Just follow the instructions here. I'm not going to go through it all here today. But just follow these instructions tonight and practice this tonight. That's your homework site. Practice this tonight. You're going to get that a precision targeter. It's the same tool. You don't have to have an account to do it. They're going to try to get you to set one up. But it um, sounds like you can, go, you can go directly to there. Is that right? Perfect. Okay? To get this type of information. So if we know, for example, we want to find a, um, uh, so you do the rentals. You, you stick with the two, three, four-year properties, or do you go bigger? Or? I do single family right now. Okay, that's good. That'll work. You can, you can look in here, and it tells you the, the types of properties that are here. You can target your, your uh, campaign. I'll show you a campaign later on you can use with this. To target owners of three-year buildings or four-year buildings, right, in a specific area. It'll help you save a ton of money. And not only that, your marketing is being very highly targeted. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's what we call it. Instead of graphic targeting. That's it, man. I tell you, I'll tell you what, guys. Um, I actually do this stuff myself. I don't just teach it. I actually do it. And what owner occupants were doing was called broadcast marketing. You know what I mean? Like casting a wide net. When we work with investors, we do highly targeted marketing. We get very specific. We pre-select the audiences. We pre-select the properties, and it, it allows us to have much higher 
response rates and conversion rates. So is this making sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Get that. Now let's be candid here. Does it sound like it's going to take a little bit of work? <laughs> it is, but it's worth it. I mean, you, you learn it the first time, do it, do it right the first time, and it really is like riding a bike. Once you learn it, you can't just repeat, rinse, and repeat, rinse, right? You set it and let it run. You do. It's all good. <clears throat> so I'll tell you what, it'll save you not only money, it'll save you time, and more importantly, the people that call you because it's targeted or are likely to be the kind of people who are self selected and filtered themselves. Because exactly. you filtered them in the process of setting them up. Yeah. Later on, I promise you when I show you the marketing, all this is going to make a lot more sense, okay? Um, so back to this. We're going to get very, very nitty gritty specific, okay? And then later on, I'll show you um, how you can use marketing campaigns to specifically direct response marketing to approach these people, okay? Before I do that, now we want to validate everything we've done. And this is an example of a US system, but you did the same thing in the Canadian system. Um, stats Canada, by the way. I like Canada stats better because it's a more sophisticated system and it's easier to navigate. I can get all the data I want on anything I want, anywhere in Canada, literally for free at our fingertips, okay? What I'm getting at is here is there's an example of one report, okay? And it gives you all the demographics and social graphics for an area at a high level. We can see everything we want, demographics, social graphics. So let's, let's choose the area of, let's look at age, for example, okay? So I can see in five-year increments how many people live here. In five-year increments, how many people live in that area, so called an area field. Um, the largest segment happened to be 50 to 54 years old nine years ago. Now those folks are in their, in their 60s. But what are people in their 60s wanting to do or thinking of doing? 76 minutes ago. So back to our example. Yeah. Our example with um, uh, Alex uh, and Baru. Thank you. Um, the family they were the family they're looking at. Let's say a family's moving to Toronto. You know. They always say we want to be a good neighborhood. neighborhood. Okay. Now, does that family want to, two, let's say it's two children, want to be in a neighborhood where the largest segment of the population is getting ready to retire? Probably not. I mean, one or two white, but people with two children want to be in a neighborhood where other people have two children. So we had to save um, Alice and Tiger for precious capital for a long period of time. And I'm not saying we can't sell here. We can sell any neighborhood. But when we market to emerging retirees, the same we would market to families with two children. We're trying to do different language patterns, keywords, key phrases, things like that, right? So uh, Aru, being the smart agent that he is, knows this, okay? So what we recommend is to all this stuff I just showed you is actually show it to your clients, okay? It's amazing. I know it sounds crazy. Why would I show this to my clients and they won't need it? They still need it because you got your license. But when we share this kind of stuff with our clients, Specifically, investors, what does that do for our credibility? It goes up. It goes up, absolutely. So, um, and by the way, when I first figured this out, um, I mean, I was doing pretty good. Like on my license, I was making enough commissions. I knew I could leave my day job, which is what I wanted. The challenge was, guys, I was spending way too much time going out at night. I still was working a day job, but I go out at night and show properties. Sunny house, open house, and stuff like that. I wanted to come home and find out my children had already come to bed. Man, you do that enough times, it'll tear at your heartstrings. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody have children? Yeah. So the thing I like about investors is, while some of them will go out on nights and weekends, more often more investors go out during the day. Has that been your experience too? Yeah. More, more like business hours? Yeah. I mean, for the most part, it's not an exact thing, but I'd rather, it changed everything. Um, slowed myself down, paid attention to all this information, and I do share with my clients, so they're making better, more data-driven decisions, does that make sense? Which means we're making more money. So when our, so when our clients make more money, what do we think more of again? Yeah. Hey, that's better. <laughs> like, let's work on this side of the room. <laughs> so, you know what's interesting is, um, I got to see Paul McCartney Thursday night in Madison, Wisconsin, the you know, Beatles, and uh, he did this thing in the show where he had the, the left side competing against the right side, and then he had the women competing against the men. And if you ever watched the Beatles videos, it's like all, all girls, right, just screaming at the top. You can't even hear the Beatles scream. So, anyways, that's where I got that one. <laughs> one of my suits, the liner, about this one. The liner actually has the Beatles in the liner. <laughs> have the Beatles up. Okay, so back to this. Um, 
All right, are you, are you ready to move forward with this? Yes. All right, let's do some marketing, and then we'll, we'll do one marketing campaign and take a breather and do more marketing. I just want to make sure everybody is okay so far. Um, Where did you get this data from? This is from a planning commission. So every county in, in Canada, every town, by the way, has what's called a planning commission. So like out in London, I would just Google Middle, Middle, Middlesex County Planning Commission, or I could Google London Planning Commission. I do like the county level planning commissions better because they generally have more data. Now we'll take us just a real quick uh, pause here. Um, that validation part sometimes can be, sometimes it's easy, it's fast, sometimes it's a little slower. Because not every county has the same website. They all look different. They're all programmed from different programmers. And what you have to do is you have to drill down, like they start at the county level, then you have to select whatever county you're in, right? And then drill down there. And you get down to the neighborhood level, then you can get the really nitty gritty data. Because right, when you're flipping, well, let's face it, guys, if we're flipping, this, this is a business. And we got to think business, right? And the more we can help our clients see the data and give it to them and hopefully make better decisions. So the other option is, is um, what's your first name? Tyler? How nice to meet you, Tyler. You can use the planning commissions if you find them too cumbersome or they just, they're all too different. Just go to the uh, Canada stats. Because it's all, it's the same exact format. It, it's going to, at least for me, it took me a little bit of time to figure out Canada stats, how to do reporting. But once I did, it was just, it's just easy. You just keep repeating, you know. Um, so start with your county first and see how where that gets you. If it gives you everything you need and want, just stick with that because it's generally formatted. Plus, uh, if you show it to your clients, you're going to realize you're showing them data specific to them. Does that make sense? Um, if you try to turn them on as Canada, Canada stats, excuse me, um, the investors will love you for it. A lot of other older occupants will be like, what am I? So you go do all that, right? <laughs> so, okay, let's do this, guys. Let's go ahead and do a marketing campaign. And then we'll start with the book here. We'll do one campaign and we'll, we'll stop and do more marketing after that. Uh, by the way, I did bring a, a photocopy of, of this with me. We can scan this in after class if you guys would like to. Um, but let me just explain this this booklet. It's a tool we use in a commercial world, okay? Um, and I just want to emphasize one thing here. We brought some of these tools down from the commercial world into the residential world to help us be more effective with investors. Because otherwise, what we found out was we were teaching you how to invest through MRAI, right, knowing there was an investor, but most agents would go right back to what they were doing. And uh, you'd have deals across your desk and just hand it out to your clients, which is okay, we, your clients go first. But we think you should invest yourselves too. So what we figured out was if we took tools from the commercial role, brought them down into the residential role where it made sense, and used them here, you could be a lot more effective, more competitive, out, like operating a vacuum, right? Because most other agents are not gonna do this. In fact, if you think about it, um, this class is only targeted by KW Market Center, you know? So that eliminates all the other brokerages out there, right? And not only that, in the Market Center here, there's, there's 12 of us here, roughly speaking. And that's a fraction of your agent count in the Market Center. And chances are you're going to go, God bless you. Yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> I, um, I, took, I took a walk yesterday at uh, Spring Bank Park. By the time I was done, I was just like, eyes the whole night, you know? So back to this. Um, uh, do either of you have any desire to, at some point, do some of the bigger transactions, like commercial type transactions? All right. What we recommend is do this first. Learn, learn it on a small scale, right here in, in the residential world. And if, for those of you who are interested later on, you, then you can jump into commercial. But the difference now is you'll bring some knowledge with you. Does that make sense? And obviously, some some clients with you too, by the way. Because I can tell you, if you think residential is tough, you should see commercial. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever commercial there before? You know what I'm talking about? Yep. They don't want the red carpet, of course, like, like we do in the residential world. Does it even happen sometimes that way? <laughs> okay, so back to this. Um, years ago, I had a financial planner's booklet. This is where the idea came from. Financial planner's booklet full of you know stocks, bonds, mutual funds, things like that. So um, I find myself one day in a hospital coming out of surgery. This is what this is what I wrote in the back. And uh, first thing I see is, the first person I see is a, is a nurse with a needle. She's a recovery nurse. Get ready to give me a shot. And I asked her, I said, could you please tell me what that is? She said, yes, Mr. Wilson, it's called Dalatum. Have you ever heard of Dalatum before? Yeah. Good Lord. This so that never makes it on the street. I don't know what's in that stuff. It's good stuff in it. I mean, it works, right? 
I should say, stay away from Del Monte. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, there were a few things I knew I was in trouble because uh, the next person after it was a surgeon who said, congratulations, you made it. Bad news. Your right leg's not functioning right now. I'm ripping off a bed I mean, I'm, I'm laughing now, but I, back then it was not a, it was a pretty scary thing. Because my first thought was, I never left my day job. I'm thinking, what, are, like, what is what is a real to do when you can't walk and you can't drive? Go to Uber Cat, right guys? I'll take you to Uber Cat here. 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 At the time, I had my two oldest children were both in college at the same time, right? And in the states, they were out of state. Out of state colleges, private, small, private out of state colleges. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Now, my stepdaughter, she's uh, going to be 12th grade 12 this year. Uh, she wants to go stay in the states so we can get her a really sweet deal. Because she's a foreigner, makes good grades, her mom's a professional, all that kind of stuff. The first two kids, though, I think I bought a couple of Ferraris and Ogiers. <laughs> it's not like up here. Canada is so much easier to go to university, right? It's so much easier. It's less expensive. More competitive, though. And again, so back to that. Um, uh, at the time, I was also going through this long, terrible dad divorce. <laughs> you know, I suppose it was really fun divorces when I was here, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I was. Uh, I knew I was in trouble. I went through uh, one of my life surrender moments. You guys ever know somebody who's had like that, like multiple things happen at once? And, that was my, one of my big moments. I went through surrender, and I uh, just basically started relying on prayer to figure out what to do, because I didn't know what to do. And it was, it was everything happening was. In any case, um, I got the idea through one of the, my morning rituals is to take this booklet, and instead of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, put in there duplexes, triplexes, or fourplexes. Who thinks that might be a good idea? Yeah. So here's what happened. Um, uh, two days later, doctors was up for a daily visit. And um, sits down, the first thing he said was that Mr. Wilson, the nurse was telling me that I'm wrong, like that. The bed's not there. I can't, I can't refuse the medication. Who's heard of the Bilotto before? Who was that? Had your hands up? Who's that? Heard of the Bilotto. Yeah. Um, that apparently in the hospital, when you refuse medication, they don't like that. Yep. So uh, in any case, uh, he, he got to know me. I, I still do high adventure trips with scouts all over the U.S. and Canada. Uh, anybody been up to Alcoa before? Do that kind of stuff. So in any case, he looks at me and he says, you know, do you believe you're going to walk again? Just like that. You know, who's supposed to think about this? I look back at him and I said, if you believe I'm going to walk again, I believe I'm going to walk again. I mean, what would you do? Well, I said, this guy's hands. And uh, he said, if you just had the mustard seed of faith, what I was talking about? He's like, how does this? If you do everything I tell you to do, you actually every single day, not only be walking, you'll be surfing, skiing, and everything else. And six months later, I took my first class job on a two-day backpacking trip. Nickel. Well, I thank God for putting a doctor in my path. His name is Matt Alcotti. If anybody is, has somebody, uh, you ever know somebody that's had like metal in their back, in their rods, cages, steel, things like that? He didn't do that. He put cement in my back. In any case, write this down. This is just a personal thing. His name is Matt Alcotti, E L K A D I. I think the guys are working with you guys. Um, and he didn't just fix my, my back. When he asked me that question, Think about my mindset. I believe in I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to be on a walker, and that's just what I thought, right? But when he asked me that question, can you see how he shifted my mind, my mindset, my belief system? Did you guys just have bold? Yeah. Okay. Remember bold? It's all about believing, right? Yeah. So did you know you could do that for other people? You can help. Sure. Yeah. So if you got eight, the folks who had children, or you have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, then you should tell them every day how beautiful they are, that you love them. And you can do anything you want, and then you start believing it. Make sense? No. It's not preaching over today. <laughs> and again, so back to this. Um, he gets up to walk out, looks back, and says, most of you guys just watch TV and eat, and eat food. And I said, I can't. I have to work. I did business for myself. And he said, what do you do? And I said, I work with investors. And he said, no kidding. I've been thinking about that lately. It gets better. He said, would you come to my practice and help my doctors invest in real estate? Ding, 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 took about 0 .001 seconds to so say yes to that. <laughs> See, that's why I don't do the drugs, right? So I can do one opportunities. <laughs> First, the answer was yes. And um, three months later, after some intense therapy, he came to pick me up in his car, take me to a restaurant where 30 of his 32 years were waiting for me. Now, I didn't want to show up with a bunch of these kind of things. Because what were these doctors done with this type of marketing? Just left it, or threw it away, right? So I came with a bunch of these. But you can see this is one of the originals. Um, so, uh, so let's just get to it. Okay, in your notes, if you could go ahead and please write the number one, 
and then write cover page. Okay, I'm going to kind of do the breakout for you. So number one, cover page, and then write this <laughs> phrase. Not much yet. Um, don't write the word booklet. Just write where the smart money is. Okay, that might write there. Where the smart money is. The reason is it creates what's called an open loop in the reader's mind. And here's how this works. Um, actually, I'll demonstrate it for you. So let's say you're the doctors in this restaurant, and I'm up there on the walker with this booklet. And I say, where the smart money is, and stop. What question is being formulated inside your mind? Where? Where is it? it what it does is open loop means we go to the subconscious mind. OK, we pass the, the conscious filter. Remember this from Bull? Remember the Bull? I know they're on Bull 2.0. I, I haven't done that one yet. Um, did they talk about that, though? Subconscious first? Yeah. So in any case, then you give them a picture of the area. OK, of course, Toronto is one of the most prettiest places uh, on the planet. So our cityscapes, well, except for today, <laughs> you can't see the top of the tower today. But but yes, if you, by the way, if you get a picture online, guys, um, the program what we tell you is to please purchase the photo, because then you have the legal right to reproduce it. Okay? Believe it or not, there's a there's a business in town here in Toronto that has software to track who's using other people. Let me sure you guys know that, and they will send you a letter and tell you if you got to got to pay for the photo. You ever anybody had that before? Yep, it happens, doesn't it? Yep. Not real estate, but yeah. So funny. In any case, um, so do that to kind of humanize this, right? Give them a, I, I like the business skyline with a nice little you know, blue sky up here. And then give the answer, investing right here in Toronto, or wherever you are, okay? Um, now, do, do, any of you, do either of you live outside the area? Like you're, you're having your, your license here, but you live outside of Toronto? Or in the suburbs, or in the communities? Yeah. Yeah, where, where, where do you live? Well, I live in Mississauga. Okay, nice. It's just like not very far. Yeah, we actually have two water centers in now. <laughs> so Stephen Hannon and I go back probably about five years now. So I'm going to push back to America. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's still at one of them. I forget the other guy. The other one's Lawrence. pretty good. Captain two. Lewis? Yeah, I think they launched like two years ago or something like that. Anyways, look at Mississauga and let's uh, say the last generation in the basin. It's happened. It's crazy. You know? Here's what's interesting, Roberto. People often will say, well, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait until the prices drop again. Everything you're to, guys, it always goes up. I mean, it might take a dip every now and then. But one of our sayings is um, actually from a guy named David Osborne, one of the top guys in Canada. He says, don't, don't wait and buy. Buy and wait. Exactly. OK, so then give your broker's uh, name and your contact information. Now, what I would do here in Ontario, Toronto's got its own little special board, is to include your agent ID, okay? Um, I've had people say, you need it, some people don't, I say, you know what, just put it in there. Does that make sense? Put it in there, just don't take a chance. Put it in Not on the envelope, but on the cover, okay? All right, so that's uh, cover sheet. Get this thing out of the way here. And please write the number two, and write the word letter, or intro letter, introductory letter, okay? Um, and in here, I just make a suggestion. It's for all of us to, to refrain from talking about ourselves. We don't don't give your credentials; they don't care. ABR, CRS, all that stuff, just, they don't care. Talk about the area rel relative to investing. Does that make sense? Like, tell them, hey, did you know that close to half of our residents right now are renting? That's an amazing statistics. Statistics, people. And because um, what would that mean if somebody interested in investing? They should give themselves some rentals, right? So you can help them determine what it is they want. Right, so that's um, intro letter. Okay, then number three, uh, please write the word uh, story, S-T-O-R-Y. Story is really important because what you're doing is you're giving them an example of an investment property, an actual real life example start to finish. This is one of mine. I gave them a pro forma on the purchase years ago, probably 20 years ago now. The pro forma on the sale, for the newer folks, real quick, pro forma, all it means is the income coming in, the expenses going out. Does that make sense? Rents, and then what's coming out is taxes, maintenance repairs, things like that, okay? And then I gave them the story part, okay? Hey, if either of you have not bought a property before, I know close to half of you have, which is really good. If you haven't bought one yourself, you can use my story. You can just copy it. Okay, for the newer folks, um, we're, leadership, but we're expected to share our marketing with our agents. I know you're not my agent specifically, but when I'm in your classroom, I consider your students, okay? So you can use mine. Just change out the picture. 
Mm -hmm. Which actually, the, sorry, picture and a name. And it was, so Alex, don't just change the picture and forget the name of the river. I said, well, Gary got pretty all of a sudden. Look at it now. <laughs> that's on the river side, right? Good. Okay. Um, that's number three. Number four is the word sample. And all we're doing is providing samples of properties from the area. Okay? Well, okay, let me emphasize something real quick. In, when the samples, what I suggest is this, is don't just give them back to the listings from the market center, which is what I did the first time. Because I thought the booklet was supposed to sell properties for me. But the booklet's actually not designed to sell properties. In fact, what is the booklet designed to sell? The process. Yeah, yeah, the idea or you. Exactly. So what I recommend is mix it up with active, pending, and sold. Maybe two each, something like that, okay? Uh, active, pending, and sold. That also tells the reader that you're not just trying to sell this. Thing. You're actually trying to help them make good decisions. Does it just make sense, guys? Yeah. Give them data, information, tools, samples of properties. Okay. Um, by the way, I almost forgot. The number five, the fifth uh, part of this, is the word tool. T O O L. Okay. And really, what we're doing is providing, like in this example, a spreadsheet. Just basic spreadsheet. Columns are the properties, right? So 1922 Rockledge, two high bluff, you know, and then the rows are the actual income and expense. They're the rents, taxes, insurance, maintenance, repairs, water bills, things like that. At the end is what we call the NOI, net operating income. You don't have to write that down, but basically, after you paid all your expenses, this is what you have left from your rent, okay? That's number five tools. Now, um, can I give you a real quick explanation of this when it comes to rentals versus flips? Okay. Rentals is easy because you just look them up. You, know, you can do it that five years. You're not gonna have a you're not gonna have a lot of them on your MLS. I can tell you because I looked at it. Which leads me to the next part of class where I'll show you how to actually find the owners and the properties themselves. Because I gotta tell you guys, half of our investor transactions are not even on the MLS. So you're gonna break outside the MLS. And those probably a rain teaser there, but uh, and you'll be more effective when you sh I show you the tools coming up if you use those tools. But back to this, um, rentals are easy because they're rentals. Flipping is a little more difficult. To build a book on flipping, you've actually got to go a little bit deeper. So what you do is this. You will look for properties that have sold twice, say, in the last year. Make, make sense? The first sale was a little bit lower, the second sale was a little bit higher. Chances are that was probably a flip, okay? Uh, what I've seen also people do is this, is they'll buy uh, an old property, so a, small, me, a small property, and raise it, basically bulldoze it, and build up a much bigger property. That's not just happening here, that's happening like almost everywhere I go now. Crazy. Um, I've seen people in Washington, D.C. buy two lots side by side, tear them both down, and build up a big little mini mansion. You know? And again, so back to this. Look for properties that sold twice in a year, First purchase, low price, second, second sale, higher price. And be specific, I just want to give you my particular take on this. I would look for the ones where the same agent was the, was the buyer's agent on the initial purchase and the listing agent on the eventual sale. Because that tells you the agent was like me and you, you work with these guys who make more money, right? Um, and then what I would do is I'd call them up and say, you know what, I have an investor looking, like, looking to flip a home in that area. I saw yours out there, looks like your flipper did a great job. Can you please tell me what he did or she did to the property to make it such a good flip? And they'll tell you. Yeah, you chandeliers, you know, countertops, whatever. And now you've got yourself your story. So it's just making sense, guys? Just convey to them, give them actual credits. Now, once a property has been sold on the MLS, if the information is considered public information, you can find anyways. You can go to your, your tax assessor website and find it there too, right? The point is, is um, give them actual examples. Yeah, is this making sense, guys? Yeah. Right. Now, that's, as a result of all this, that night in the restaurant, hey guys, is it just me or is it getting like really warm in here? Yeah, open the door. This one right here? Yeah. Okay. It literally feels like the air heats on. <laughs> Hopefully you guys will get that. Well, there's no air pump. I mean, it was, it was like, it was blasting and then it just popped off. Yeah, maybe the maybe the um, out the ambient temperature outdoors. I know bigger buildings have an outside thermometer for regular to tell the ambient temperature. Yeah, that's probably what happened. So, okay, now um, 
As a result of that, that first time out of the gate with this, um, in the restaurant, of the 30 doctors that were there, six of them said, I'm, I'm in, I want to do this. I want to, how do I do this? I'm going to work with you. What do I sign? Whatever. That's a 20% conversion rate for something that took, I mean, a couple hours on a computer, right, initially. Um, two, two hours of dinner, probably. And they paid for the dinner, by the way. And drove me to and from. Uh, great. Uh, so the real trick is to break your back when you go skiing. <laughs> That's not part of it. In any case, um, I thought to myself, I'm going to make a lot of money with these doctors because I've been I'm the only agent that ever thought of working with doctors before. <laughs> Mr. Genius up here. I bet every agent at some point thinks, I'll work with doctors, they got all the money. Turns out surgeons, particularly surgeons, are not that easy. They have so much to men over time. Um, they're, they're just world over total. Goal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the top seven groups of people to work with, okay? Um, everybody's running out. <laughs> hey, before I do that, real quick, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one more thing. On the book, what we recommend is you do 25 of these at a time initially, just to get started. Um, the reason is for the newer folks in Canada, we have a philosophy which is learn small. You know what I mean? Learn on a small scale, and then you can grow big. So learn small, master the tech. There's checklists with these things, stuff that you know, reporting, things like that. And then once you master it, then you can crank up the volume. Okay? Does this make sense, guys? So learn small, then grow big. Um, the reason we chose 25 is uh, I've now taught this class well over 700 times in almost all of our market centers. And I've trained in classes just like this over 20,000 of us. And in the training program, I've trained you one, 101, about 3,000 of them. And your colleagues are getting 20, uh, out of 25, an average of three calls. Compared to this glossy postcard deal, guys, this is a half a percent return call rate on this. That's pretty bad. And these are cold leads. I mean, you gotta, you got to kiss a lot of frogs to get that prince, right? It's hard work. But what do we call people that return our, what do we call people that call us on this type of money? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, we're probably prospects here because between timing, motivation, readiness, willingness, ability, they clearly demonstrated what motivation, willingness, definitely, possibly time, pop top timing. So maybe three of the five, and I don't know about you guys, I mean, we're all going to go home tonight, get these two things in the mail. Which one would grab our attention to hold it the longest? Every other week. I mean, these, these, and out for, for the veterans in the room, how many of you have your license to say more than three years? I'd rather get three calls from this than 50 from this any day of the week. This is hard work. Yeah. So let's just give you the, the seven groups. You guys ready? You don't have to kiss all those frogs. Just kiss these seven people. Just to clarify, sorry, are you, are you sending that bigger package? Correct. To, without even vetting, you're just like finding the people who own the multi-residential? I'm going to give you some examples now, yeah. Okay. And by the way, what, what we do is um, we always try to find a place of business if at all possible to send it there. If we can't, we'll send it to their home. But for place of business, for some reason, we just get higher response rates. In the basement. I mean, it's kind of a professional, like compared to this, right? I mean, this, this is definitely more substantial. It looks more like something kind of business, you know? The charts and graphs and things like that. Uh, all right, let's give me the seven groups. Uh, you guys ready? You don't, you don't have to kiss all those folks. Just kiss these seven people. <laughs> I guess I should be careful. Well, you know, Gary Wilson just said, just kiss these seven people the money comes out. <laughs> let's kiss chiropractors. Right? Great. So chiropractors is one of the groups, but not no particular word, by the way, but chiropractors is a great group of people to work with. Um, the dental group, another great group. Awesome investors. Um, in fact, they're business owners. Right? Think about it. They're business owners, so chiropractors, dentists, uh, teachers, kind of crazy, but you know, they're up there. Teachers don't make as much as orthodontists. But would you agree teachers probably do want to make more money? Sure. This is how they seem to take good. In fact, read a book um, called The Millionaire, ne Millionaire Next Door. Has anybody read that book? Great book. You'll find out teachers is one of the top groups of people who become millionaires. Self-made millionaires. Uh, by the way, there's another great Great book called The Millionaire of Mindsets. Have you ever read that? TR, he's Canadian, TR Hart Great book. So, in any case, um, teachers, um, oh, other public servants, firemen and policemen guys make really good investors. It's amazing. In fact, would you say they're action takers? And who do we work with? People who take action. Action. Be action takers and work with action takers. Firemen and policemen. Um, another great group. Engineers, 
And there's a lot of them around here. Why not? Take a wild guess how many different types of engineers are on the world. So there's a question. 452 types of engineers. <laughs> there are. In fact, there, either of you have an engineer anywhere in your sphere, family, friends, neighbors, relatives, anybody married to an engineer? Right. <laughs> She's smiling too, that's good. And then, what's your first name again, I'm sorry? Lizanne. Lizanne. Lizanne, would, would you agree uh, engineers, I mean, they're going to ask a lot of questions, or like, they'll take this kind of stuff and, you know, turn it inside out, upside down, and tear it apart, right? But here's the thing about engineers. Do we have to teach an engineer how to do something more than once? Probably not. They get it, they, they're good, they're smart, they study, they learn the first time. Um, in fact, would you agree engineers, when they commit, they generally follow through? They do. And check this out. Um, I should probably show you this a little bit more sense. Can I show you something from my own personal investing that helps explain all of this? All right. So I used to do what's called, um, let's draw this over here. I used to do what's called flat right? I think this is the generation. Right Otherwise, my name's not here. <laughs> I used to do what's called flat lighting, buying the same kind of properties over and over again, using all those late night guru techniques, right? No money down in financing, usually end up with inferior properties, right? I'm telling you, and I tell, well, actually, I will tell you, 17 years, I acquired a whopping 42 units doing that. We call it flat lighting because it'll take forever to build up enough substantial wealth and legal to retire, okay? Thank the Lord I got investors in the game, and some of them were actually growing vertically. They were doing something like this. Okay? They didn't keep buying, well, number one is, they were buying better profits. They weren't buying the cheap stuff. They were buying, not like A plus luxury, but good, solid, stable, C, C plus profits. Okay? Now, between these two types of properties, which ones would you say have better rent increases over time? Better properties. It's just you know, kind of self-evident. But here's the other thing I figured out, guys. This took me about three years to get myself permission to switch over. Is that they didn't keep buying the same kind of properties. Like if we bought a duplex and it worked, you know how our brain would keep wanting us to keep buying duplexes, right? No, you want a six bucks. Bingo. <laughs> That's what they did, guys. They forced themselves, they disciplined themselves to only buy the next bigger property. In terms of numbers of units, more doors per purchase, right? I mean, this could be 16 single-family homes, but it's one purchase, or, or you know, 16 flex or two eight flexes. Right here in town, you got a lot of these mixed-use buildings, right? The first floor is the restaurant, the beauty shop, and you got a couple floors of apartments. Bingo. Um, by the way, and with the use of our commission, like for me personally, when I started using my license, for example. I was attracting more of these folks because initially that's what I was doing, but these people doing nobody else. So. And as a result, my commission stayed what? Flat. What our commission sort of look more and more like class when we start working with more and more of these folks? I should make this part of class, should I? Right. And by the way, my personal growth on this, like my own investments, was not like that. My personal growth on the investment side was more like this. It was slow starting, it took off, but it eventually took off over here, right? Um, this is helping me you personally, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I wish I could spend more time on this. Um, this is probably one of the most important things I can tell you, actually. Um, does anybody have any questions? You guys know how I actually did this, like financially? All right. So, down here, bar up to my eyeballs. Bar every dime I can get. That's the way to go through life, I can tell you. Did that for 30 years, right? Three years ago, December 15, 2015, I paid off my last mortgage. I have no business debt, I have no personal debt, okay? And here's what I did. I started watching what these guys were doing, decided to buy these better properties, which really freaked me out because it cost more money, and I was putting money down, so I'm using my own capital. But what happened is, is I added an extra, and I would save everything, all the extra, extra excess income, like the rents, I put my own commissions into it so I could then buy the next property. But now instead of getting, having two units bringing in cash flow, now I've got six units bringing in cash flow, right? Then I have 14 units bringing in cash flow. And I got 30 units bringing in cash flow. Wait, that's part of it. Here's the other part. 
is by cash flow increase that I was actually putting money down, I had some more equities. I mean, essentially, the equity was also growing. Um, and I will tell you, because of what we call the income approach to evaluation, which is what appraisers use, appraisers use on the, the bigger properties, it grows even more. If you, if you, look, either of you ever seen a property be bought by something called a REIT, R E I T, mm -hmm. real estate investment trust? This is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They'll artificially jack up the rents. They go and resell the property, flipping big buildings. I'm, I'm buying a whole, I don't like, I worked hard for it, but I want to keep it, right? Um, in any case, so they're smart, they know what they're doing. But what I did is I eventually had enough equity and I was able to borrow against what I had. You can, call it, you can write this down, by the way, blanket mortgage, okay? Blanket mortgage. Technically speaking, it was actually a commercial line of credit. That's what it was. A line of credit that extended over my, my properties that I already had. Did you have to have a certain number of properties or a certain value? Yeah, you know what happened? In order to get that blanket mortgage, it was considered commercial? You know what happened is, uh, they actually, I got turned down. I mean, literally 20 times. I'm, I'm thinking, I've got a great idea here. Every one of them said no. You know, you know why? Commercial lenders want to be in first position. Right. So if all they found would let me borrow 50% of the value, you was loan it because there's no risk to the lender. So if I find, I'll give you 50% of the value. If there was enough for me to go out there and buy the next pair of property, okay? Rate, you know, fix it up, raise the rents, made it more valuable, right? Make it the worst valuation. Then get a brand new first orders on that property. Right? And I got the money and I put it Yep. And then paid back a line of credit. Now here's where things really started getting good. What did that lender do for me on that line of credit? When I just paid it off and I added another income producing asset to my portfolio. You extended the line of credit. Bingo. That was the difference. Actually, you just think about this or digest it or write it down, guys. Here's what happened. The big shift for me was I went from borrowing out of need to I had to borrow to get the property. Right? To getting the property and the borrowing strategically against the assets. It didn't happen overnight. But the difference started showing up in about three years. It took me five years, actually, I'll just say, in less than five years, I added another 208 units by doing that. Okay? So I, I would have thought this would have been faster. It wasn't. This was the slow way. It turns out what I thought was the slow way that it would be the fast way because of the growth of the equity and the cash flow. Yes, sir. When you say you bought an extra 202 units, is that 208 doors or 208 properties? Oh, per door. I'm sorry. Yeah. So like one was a 70 unit apartment complex, for example, and I had 90 units, things like that. So I would I kept getting more door per purchase. That was really the key. So you're that, that flat line there too, that's just like duplexes and... and Mostly singles and duplexes, yeah. And it was just, the thing is, is uh, what's your first name? Jack. Jack, nice to meet you. So if I was to go visit 100 of these properties, they did take like two weeks. Who visit them all? But if I go visit one 100 unit building, I could do that in an afternoon. And here's another thing. The lenders, turns out, actually I'll just ask you, if you were a lender, let's say we were a bank, would we run to lend money on this stuff down here or this stuff up here? On top. Every day of the week. Every day of the week. It actually got easier, guys. It gets easier. All right? Um, I'm really getting off the tangent here, but I think this is pretty important stuff because a lot of you said you're interested in investing. And some of you already are, but I have them. Does this help you guys? Yeah, no, that's, that's really huge because I, I think, you know, there's such limitations when you start to buy those smaller yeah. residential properties on your own. Yeah. It's all based on your credit and you just run into options. Yeah. But then with the, like, the apartment buildings and stuff, like you said, it's just based on the cap rate and yeah. stuff. So, you know, they look at that as its own little entity type of thing that they're looking at. They do. And in fact, I'll tell you, I can't bank the tummy uh, on the city of Newport, I'm going to put You said, we really don't care so much about you. We care more about the He meant it. He didn't mean it to be like mean, but he said the building, the bigger the building, I become less and less, less significant in the equation. The building stands on its own, whether I'm there or not, they're, they're okay. And you, if you reduce the risk by having more skin in the game, you, you follow what I'm saying? Like um, borrowing only 50% of the value, that was no risk to that day. Yeah. So, um, in any case, here's an interesting question. Uh, was that Lisette? Oh, right. oh Lisette. Lizanne. Lizanne, I'm sorry, Lizanne, thank you. So, Lizanne, would your husband, the engineer, between these two types of investing, which one would appeal more to him? The other one. The growth, the organization, the structure, it's all there. So, so if you think about it, this not only helps our investors, it helps us 
work with inventors because we pre-selected, pre-targeted. Uh, the gentleman that just left, this is kind of getting back to this question. How do we know who to select it? to send it? We don't want to broadcast some stuff. We pre-select the audience for people that are more likely to want to or need to invest. And so yeah, thank you. Um, Gary. Yes, sir. Um, I don't like, I have to step out, but I'm just, I want to complete this list. You got through five. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm still for six and seven, that's right. I'm really fun at parties too, by the way. I can spend all night. Okay, so engineers, uh, pilots is a good group. Yep, yeah. pilots. The thing about it, pilots are trained and conditioned to make decisions well. Fast, good thing for us, right? So pilots, um, now let's see, another great group, uh, military, I think that's it. Love the military folks. We just celebrated um, D-Day, right? A lot of Canadians are in that mixture. Um, my wife said one of, the, one of my wife's uncles actually won the Russian, I figured Russian cross on the line or something like that, purple, because he saved Russian people, the guys on the, on the field. He brought them down in front of that. Okay, engineers, uh, military. Would you guys agree military folks are generally more disciplined on average than those other folks? They are. They also tend to be really respectful. Who'd like to, show hands, who'd like to have more respect for the Okay, okay. So, all right, real quick, um, thanks for being in class, by the way. Sorry. What I'll do is, uh, there's a campaign I'll give them later on. I'll have them take a picture of it for you. So, just, are you tight with anybody here in the room? You can share Everybody. with me. Everybody. Like <laughs> there you go. Have a good afternoon, man. All right. Um, so, in any case, uh, actually, how many of you feel like you know just one person in any, any of those seven groups? Just one. Well, we're heard the same birds of a feather flock together, right? So Saturday was a beautiful day, beautiful golfing day. And all those dentists and orthodontists are out there golfing. And who's likely to be part of the golfing parties with them? Other than some the dogs. And they're going to say, well, how is it that you're getting these properties? And they're going to say, you know what? You've got to, you've got to call uh, Lizanne. She's the one with the tools, the information, the inventory, right? And who those guys are going to call? They're going to call Alex. <laughs> have you ever had that actually happen to you in real life? Like you went your license, you work with like the neighbor's daughter who just got married, and then all of a sudden, three months later, she says, "Hey, I just want to tell you, we're so funny. We were in this this new building, open construction, open house, and we just bought a house, and we thought you'd be really happy for us, right?" <laughs> you know? In any case, uh, the cool thing about investors is if you focus on these types of folks. Generally, they're going to be more loyal than just a run-of-the-mill investor who's just trying to just like skin every cat they can. Um, let's let's do a commitment test for your marketers now. Let's say you do the booklet every month uh, for the next 12 months. So that means 25 booklets go out times 12, which is 300 books. I want you to write a number from your heart, which is this. Okay, from your heart. How many transactions do you believe you're going to get? Setting out 300 booklets over the next 12 months. How many, how many booklets? Uh, 25 per month for 12 months. So 300 go out. What, the, what we're trying to get you to do is, uh, just like a bowl, develop your intuition. Learn to use and trust your intuition, OK? Um, see, what happens is success is an inside job. It starts in here. And when you start in here, then you put your mind to work here. And your mind will help you, like in this case, get the right education, right information, and uh, take the right action steps, right? Um, let's write this down, and then we'll take a quick breather. There actually is a formula for success, and it, it is this. Um, you first need the right education. Do you agree? You've got to have the education. Variable two is you have to have the right information. And the neat thing about education is it shows us how to get and use the, 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 the information. Excuse me. All right, the third variable requires us here to take action. action. That's the part that separates us from everyone else out there because you're in here, you care about yourself, you're self-educating, take training, things like that. Um, I know you're an action taker because you're here. Just have heart if you're pretty new in the business, guys. Man, just keep swinging the bat, right? For the better, would you agree? You got it, you got it. Persistence and consistency is really the key. I can teach you everything in the world, at least it comes to this subject, okay? But the fact is you got to actually wake up in the morning and start swinging the bat. Okay, would you like to take a five-minute retro break? Yep. Watch the break. Let's come back at 3.05, and we've got more marketing to do, and I promise I'll have you guys ready here by 8.55 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is anybody, anybody has questions during the break? I don't mind saying that's your on the break. Oh, yeah.
I think it's going to be like two services to point two four. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just coming, yeah. No. Um, and I do feel bad because I know I'm obviously yeah. in my, I live up here. Yeah. Which yeah. Anything yeah. Is that, I see this stuff that happens. Yeah. How many of you ever had an American come up and teach? Yeah. They're like, it's it's like it's it's you didn't even study. You yeah. didn't even look and see. It drives me crazy. So the Rock Thomas asked me to do this year. I don't really care. I mean, I use the property anyway. So it's for you. It's for me. You better look into this first. We think we did. Well, it wasn't a big deal. It was the content, like the marketing was kind of like the first year. But the resource tools, that's that's really what's different. So in fact, um. I wonder if we can get on the Yeah, but this is not a drive. This is not a drive. Yeah. We're different here. Oh, yeah. In fact, in uh, like New York City, the, like, the rules and the laws are way different than, say, I know. Yeah. 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 Because in England, London, it makes you realize that it's run by the criminal Yeah. 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 Uh, Tom Holly did the same. Yeah. He created an Airbnb company. He invested in Airbnb himself, mm -hmm. and he corporatized his internal business structure. Yeah. He made it available to other Airbnb investors all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. and He's doing it quite well. Mm -hmm. So we actually teach that. Like the trick, the vendor training program. We actually there's like every, everything you want to possibly know about. Um, like in Canada, you can leverage your, your um, RSP. You can buy. You can buy some. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You can buy some RSP. Yep. Um, there's all kinds of things that, that we can do, that you can do, as long as you just have to have the information in the train. You know. it, but what's interesting is, just know this, that uh, Toronto, I don't know about the entire province of my train, but definitely Toronto, they have told us that they're definitely, they're definitely going to be putting in a program for, if you want to manage properties, you do have to be licensed. It's kind of, I don't know what they're going to do, but that's what they're saying. But we're also taking the licensing. And make it at a, um, a degree program, like you, you, you have to go to college to get the your license now. For our, for yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Good. They should. <laughs> Can I ask you a question about yes, these things here? You said these are a mixture of available and so well, on. This was all the active one system, my first one. We actually changed it to put in a mixture of pending and sold dance of actors. And you said the purpose of that is? To convey to them that we really do, we're not just trying to just sell listings, we just we really do want to give them examples. Well, no, of places that are sold that were good rentals, or? Yeah, this, in this example, rentals, but the other type of looking for flipping. So you have um, several different ones for different types of clients. And check this out, too. Like, you know, you have a language pattern. It's freaking amazing. Alex bought it. It was still warm. Same with here. So we would actually customize it. Would you do the trail program? Yeah. Don't have a piece. Tell me. You have the language pattern. You should need it. 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 We would no. switch <laughs> well, I, it, it's I like it. it's it's taking everything in me to not it. We also look at the the audience to use language that You don't recommend it, right? Oh, yeah. So, like, it's a few things. I love that sound. Do you remember dentists sometimes say, you know, I'm getting up 65 years old. Um, I'd like to retire with my practice as my name, like Gary Wilson, and I'm afraid of being stuck behind a chair, like famous book that is being stuck behind a chair. So we will put those on the way. Well, the vendor, the vendor, like what they do is they give us the class right now. They do the actual content. Yep. Yeah. So there's a lot more to This way, hopefully, you're learning in the class. Yep. And if you really feel like you really like the whole idea of what you're going to do, 
Yeah, they were classrooms so, yeah. here. I don't know more about that. Mm -hmm. I'll show you that's a separate pattern. Oh, right. like, we make those little structure hoops to be able to work ourselves. I don't have to use us to teach them. Yeah. I know. I will tell you, I was a part of the we were at that hospital this morning. And it really is good. You know, it's, uh, it allows you to separate yourself from the crowd. That's really the big thing. And yeah. Like, you're going to be going on this on weekend. Oh, yeah. It's hard to believe that it's just, the It's just a weakness. Mm -hmm. It's my I just remember that, like, you know, like going down, like, right when the shots, like, you know, just up and right out. And so you just grab it and just like, leave it all, like, super hot. It's amazing. And it would be it's so much fun to stuff like that. It would be like, you know, weight or anything like that. Like, it's just a so natural way of making it. Oh, it's it's so so I'll tell you, and for me, a lot of talk. I have the most I'm just, I'm so into it. Like, yeah, you know, me too. I was like, I've like literally digested every news report yes. that's like come out over the past like three years. It's so expensive. Why are people investing? I said to my husband yesterday, I'm like, why is people want to know what they eat on Sunday? It would be so much fun. I know that. It's like a whole other day. Three days between the news and the news. So people are like, why are you trying to get your track? But you know what, though, like, freak out like, I'm like, such a hey, sports fan for so long, and I, like, like, I, I, but that's how they avoid it. I guess in some ways I justify that. I was just telling her the other day, it doesn't, I mean, you don't have to pick a man on for life. You know what I'm saying? But, like, just how much it takes to be practiced in life has just been so inspired to watch, like, just the way that, like, my letter is kind of great. It's calm, or, oh, my God, it is so awesome. It's just crazy. It's crazy. I read this article the other day, actually, my brother was mad. Yeah, the return is still pretty good. Like, there's, the there's, 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 there's this bar between like Raptors and players in that like four yeah. or five summers all just like that. Uh, yeah. And actually, one of the guys. Yeah, if you can talk like, about that, I don't know if you can. I'm going to say that to A lot of us, including me, that I said that everybody's had a bit of a quiet letter. It was like super. You're like, you're loyal. Everybody has good motivations like that. Which driving them to our watch about the world. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for my cash flow. Yeah, so that's all we have to do is determine where it's going to be. Yeah, so we can really start playing that in 2017. It's putting investors together to see what's going on. Oh, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. Well, Ian Quest is the great freak. He started, I was reading up on him, and they were playing the law. And he's only been playing the law five years. You know, the one thing you have to watch about like this is crazy as that. And if you can watch it on YouTube, I actually had a lot of success. There's this animated series called Game of Zones. And anyway, they've done a lot of stories on like their teams, but they did one of the Game of Zones episodes about the Demar or whatever. And you have to watch it. It's so funny. It's basically like an animated version of like it's like Game of Thrones, but telling the basketball. Story. So tell the story, like, you know, when she combined you kind of, like, think about the staff in the back of the tree, like, 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 to see his growth, like how, you know, how he's changed. <laughs> yeah. he was people so people so love the like, 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 Oh, sure, yeah. the, uh, provincial yeah. level. This is really like you can find out there's like a licensure board, 
they have a list. Like, you can actually research you know, like I was a kid as You well, go into like, industry and category. You know, that and so, like, um, like we would find the pilots and things like that. Um, the military, what I would do in the military is the military generally has their own publications. Yeah, this is cool. Right? Like, uh, uh, Andy Mounties, um, and it's not really a police force. Well, yeah. They had their it's, own internal uh, it's really cool. like the team is so the cool. I, I, I knew that they went to make a seat. Apparently uh, they were in Yeah, uh, that's, uh, the, uh, that's the that's the rumor on the street. Yeah. Yeah. The other would go I think it's crazy. I mean, why would he play? He's a free agent. Like, why would you risk injury? There's no way he's within the house. So, for example, Two or more yeah, officers. We know where Jeremy will like to do it. Yeah. 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 They yeah. probably have a good business year to polish the reputation of other officers. But they also probably have capital. They won. Both states won four years. They're looking to get another location for themselves. They also realize if it's mixed use, they can run out of additional units to a holistic medicine project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a software project. But if they have a partner on top, it brings them into the residential. Is that even legal? So we've had a lot of I honestly like, like yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, is just an insane sport. Like, that yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all about yeah. the youth, the the is the key. Mm -hmm. the like, 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 a couple things that came up at the break, if I could just touch on this, is um, I know for me this was my mindset early on, that in an area like this, how do people cash flow, because we're assuming you're only putting down the minimum, 35%, or in some cases 25 or 30. And the reality is, not every, not every, investor, not every investor is doing that, guys. Uh, this is the conversation with Rick. Um, a lot of investors, remember, but you can make money on appreciation, um, cash flow, there's no ways you can make money in real estate. Just remember, some investors will actually put more money down, sometimes all cash, to, get to avoid a negative cash flow. The reason is, is their focus isn't necessarily cash flow, what is their focus? Returns. Appreciation, exactly. So I learned a story, I learned that, I just tell you a question more. I just think, I'm gonna do the marketing, I'm gonna focus on the groups of people we describe, and let them, let them, uh, let the money do the talking. And let them, I would give them examples, right? And then they would say, well, I didn't want something like that, right? So, something we talked about earlier, um, I, he's, is it Terry's right? Leslie. Leslie, I'm sorry, Leslie. Okay. Um, instead of me just asking them what it is that you want, I would precondition them, giving them examples, so that it would say, well, I want one like that. And all of a sudden, now I can go into business mode and go find properties just like that. That makes sense? That helps a lot. So that's an in-person technique. What I want to do is show you a, a live technique. Um, okay? It's just a case study. I won't, let me do this real quick. Let me do this real quick. Here's the difference. Hans got three deals on his first batch of booklets, but here's why. We had him cut out the old marketing stuff from the sequence, just get rid of it from the marketing sequence, and focus on this. The reason is, is this type of marketing is like telling I, you can make money, I can help you do what we call that telling, blah, blah, blah. This is the actual doing part, where you actually give them tools, information, inventory. Does that make sense, guys? Now, if you think about it, what gets us better results? Just simply telling or doing. Every other week. And not only that, um, you do this on the first contact. You cut this out, save yourself some money. This is the first thing they're going to see from you. Does that make sense? You actually serve them on the very first contact. Okay? All right. So book them. Uh, next thing is a workshop. Um, I love this one because it's going to help you develop yourself personally too. So a few things to write down. Um, you can use your marker center training room here. No reason you can't. It's a great, great, great room. You can have your workshop. You can use your community library. Okay. Your municipality generally has what's called a municipal building. And then they have um, what they call a community room. And citizens of that community can get that room. Do you guys know that? All through for free. Yeah. As long as your event is free, you can't charge, you can't make, this has to be a non-profit thing. You're going to make money doing it, just, just know that, but you can't go there directly selling something, okay? Um, you can also use, you know, the church, mosque, synagogue, temple, wherever you worship, if you're worshiping, right? Often for free. Now, 
I personally like the library because what do we normally associate with libraries? When you think of a library, what do you think? Learning. 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 Yeah. Education, information, right. Now, um, so the night before you do your workshop, just Google real estate. And you'll get all kinds of articles and blogs on anything. Anything having to do with real estate, right? Like we just talked about what's happening with property management, okay? So bring it in. That's going to be your icebreaker to get people to engage with you because you want to have three things. You want to have engagement, commitment, and action. This is why we do a workshop. So engagement, you, you create by having people discuss something that's relevant to everybody. They're all investors and they're, they're interested in what's happening with property management. Um, now, so you got engagement. The next thing you want to do is bring in samples of properties, okay? Um, you can bring a booklet, but it, it, you definitely want to at least bring samples of properties, okay? Samples of properties. Now, um, bring in samples of properties. Also bring in some blank worksheets on investing. I mean, actually, I just saw only something on here. Uh, this is basic cash flow. I, any of us can teach this in 60 seconds, okay? Income, expense, net, okay? So bring these forms in. And you're going to have the folks in the room practicing using these worksheets with the sample property. Now, what does that remind us of? What did we used to do every day when we were children to work on worksheets? School. Exactly. It's one of the best things I've ever seen in marketing is when you provide a service, essentially an education-based service, it helps you create strong relationships. Does that make sense? So think about it. all those chiropractors and dentists are out there. Um, they want to invest. They're short on time. And they want to make good decisions. So the best thing we can do is help them in a few short hours. Like, these are the basic things you need to know. You give them the tools. Give them. In fact, this is all about, we call it prosperity through service, serve firms, and mutual prosperity. It's a basic, a basic philosophy. Now, in the room, you'll find out people are going to start rolling up their sleeves, practicing all these worksheets with the sample properties, which means we're demonstrating the two other things. Like, right? for example, when they, the fact that they show up, would you say that's a degree of commitment? Yeah. Uh -huh. So now you got engagement and commitment. The fact that they're rolling up their sleeves and filling out these forms, would you say that demonstrates action? Mm -hmm. Right? And we want to work with who? You want to take it. That's it, man. So at the end of the day, you can see who the, what we call the early adapters are versus the followers. So um, actually, let me describe this to you. So my first workshop, by the way, was a whopping six people. <laughs> I thought it was like a failure. My broker said, no, you've got to stick with them. Any marketing, you've got to keep going, right? In fact, with investors, they're repeat clients. Now, I did check, and you do have some investor clubs out there, OK? Have you ever been to an investor club before? An investor club meeting? Yeah. So we, uh, what we're doing, Leslie, is we're, uh, we like this so much we're actually doing a contest on it. The reason is, is we're hoping some of you actually will do this on a larger scale eventually and build a community around yourself, not just a video with investor, but maybe investors who are made up for the seven groups we just described earlier, something like that. Does that sound appealing to anybody here? You can focus the target, okay? Um, in any case, so back to this. My first group in about five months, I grew to 78 people. Um, we, we have people who do way better than that now. We've got to, again, we've narrowed it down, checklists, things like that. Um, but what happened is the librarian came up with their counter. She said, you got 78 people. You've got to get a location back for tonight, which you did. But up to that point, how much money would you say I spent on this technique? Is it, uh, I was going to say a free table. A little bit, little little bit of yeah. Minimal, minimal. I didn't even bring in food. I was sort of naive. <laughs> <laughs> My wife said, do you think you should bring in cookies? And I said, you know what? They actually asked me if they could bring their own cookies next time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yes, sir. I mean, it, it all sounds great. I can see it being successful. Um, my, my personality, and, and I guess a lot of people can probably relate, maybe you can't, being, you know, in, in the line work, but um, what, how do you get over the hump of, like, the stage fright thing of, like, talking, especially when you're talking about, you know, yeah. very wealthy people, uh, people who've probably done this before, uh, so they've got some sort of background knowledge already, is, is there any tips or tricks in order to, you know, get over your, your fear of like yeah. being the spotlight of this, this whole event that you're writing yeah. to? For me personally, the first time I did it, I literally, I was literally up there shaking. I mean, I felt yeah. like I was shaking. They could, I asked them, I said, can you guys see me up there shaking? <laughs> and they said, no, we can't see you shaking. But one guy said, but man, you're like, like, like <laughs> yeah. pretty embarrassing. So, but what it was was just, just practice, like repetition. Now, I will tell you, um, 
your first one that I recommend is just invite people that you already know, like in your sphere, start with them. Um, you still might shake and sweat like I did, because that's exactly what I did. Uh, but in any case, um, they stuck with me and they brought people with them the next time and they kept working. So it just over time. The other thing too is, um, like if you if you were to do the training, you have the knowledge. You, like, you, like right now you might not feel too competent, which is going to affect your competence. But if you had more competence, if you had more knowledge, right, you'd feel probably a little bit better about doing this. So practicing scripts, doing programs like like this yeah. they're offering. Yeah. Yeah, don't be afraid of striking out. I mean, I didn't I didn't even get a transaction for like the third month, you know. And, uh, and what was interesting is once that first guy worked with me, man. It's the credibility. Oh my gosh. In fact, you will have what we call it, early adapters and followers. The followers just follow, that's what they do. But the early adapters, when do they want their results? Like, like yeah. now. So work with them, right? And, uh, because you get cash flow coming in. But also, let's say, let's say Alex wants to you know, buy a rental in, uh, what's your first name you want to Paul, Paul had just bought one. What I would do is this, is this group grew, and uh, people came in, and I recognized Paul, say, Paul, would you please be the table leader for people who wanted to buy rentals? He may have only just bought one rental, but I was like, I just want to do that he could actually talk and talk to them. And Alex comes in, probably you want to sit at Paul's table because you want to buy a rental. Let's say he had only bought one. Is that necessarily a bad thing? No, it's great. It's actually good because you're close to Exactly. You're more likely to ask them, hey, man, what's your first, what's your second? Um, and let's say Alex comes back the next month and has her first rental on her contract. What does that show all those followers? Can be done. That's it. Where, where, do I, where do I do now? What, what do I now? Exactly. So what we're doing with, the, we run contests on this. Another thing I would recommend, guys, is, um, what's your first name again? Tyler. Tyler. I've got to forget that part. What are my wife's brother's names? Really, really nice, by the way. Um, in fact, you guys have the same color here. Really. <laughs> so, in any case, Tyler, let's say, um, actually, let me just ask you guys, how many of you like the idea of doing a workshop? Just, just the idea of it. The idea of it? Yeah, it scares the crap out of me, but I, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> now, if you could do it with someone else, like Paul, for example, or right. Leslie, would you be more willing to give it a shot? Yeah. So, let me show you the case study. We love people working together, guys. We can't have it. It's like the beginning of a team building type of thing. So check this out. These are um, uh, Beth Arnold, Manisha Munikar, Tanya Schmitherman. Their first workshop was last March, 20, 2018, excuse me. Yeah, 2018, March. They had 29 registrants and 24 showed up. By the way, I'll give you an example right here locally here in a second. Okay? Uh, of the 24 that were there, four of them signed docs to work with them, agreements, and made appointments to get uh, pre-approved for, for funding. And they were literally showing houses the very next day. Now, does that look like the kind of results you're going to see from your market? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's even better. Check this out. So uh, that was in March. This past November, Beth had emailed me saying, would you please go down here and help us celebrate? Tanya's retiring from her day job in December. So uh, Beth and Manisha were full-time agents, and Tanya was an employee and did this part-time. They split their commissions three ways. And in eight months, it was enough to allow her to retire from her day job. Pretty cool stuff, right? And he goes, I couldn't go because I was in San Francisco teaching. But I, I called Beth the next day, and I said, I'm just curious. How's that group of 29 doing? <laughs> and take a wild guess, guys, in eight months, how much 29 people have grown to. Just, just, and by the way, I'll tell you where it is. It's in Hoover, Alabama. Anybody ever heard of Hoover, Alabama before? They have a traffic light. <laughs> It's actually about a half hour outside of Birmingham. There's a big Mercedes Benz plant there. Just guess, dude, from your heart, just, just guess what you think that number was in Apex. Almost 300 people. Isn't that amazing? Okay, a local example. Um, Diane Price is in the Hamilton Market Center. Um, she did this, I think it was not this past fall, the fall before. I just talked there, like here, like June, July teaching. In September, here's what she did, guys. She just did a winning trip. She combined two efforts. She sent out a booklet to the engineers, right? Had her son create her civil engineer. Sent out the book, 25 books, just the way we described it. September. October sends out another, no, sorry, that was August. September sent the second batch of booklets, right? Repeat process, different properties, and announcing, hey, we're going to get together in the third month, which is October, for a workshop. In the third month, and I forget the, the venue was some bar. 
she got 22 clients out of that deal by combining this with this. Did she do same people or different same 25? People. Same, same 25? 25 people. Yep. Sorry, say that again? <laughs> yeah, she had 22, she got 22 clients out of that, out of that arrangement by combining two. Now, when I, if you were to do the training program, I would teach you two in, individually, like linearly, and then you would see the, the combinations of these things once you've mastered them individually. Does that make sense? If you think that's great, check this out, guys. If you know where you know where San Diego is, right? Mm -hmm. A little town called El Cajon, right outside of San Diego. Where our market center is there. I taught there for the second time back in January. And one of the students came in and recognized him. He'd been through the training, right, from two years before. He said, Mr. Wilson, I just want to tell you, I kept going back to the booklet to perfect it. In this last batch of booklets, like the end of the prior year, end of 2018, 25 booklets go out, converted to 25 transactions. I'd never seen that done before, ever. I, I never even got close to that. 100%, yeah. Isn't that amazing? You know, it's all because you're pre-selecting your audience and you're using language patterns. Yes, sir. Can I just get some clarification? These workshops that you're you're setting up as an agent, are they like you invite a group and they come back like week after week the same people, uh, or you mostly, mean, yes, they are. Okay. Okay. And what I what I would suggest, Tyler, is um, every meeting at the end leave a little bit of time open for Q and A, just basically networking, and say, guys, remember this is for you. If you know anybody who's interested, like you, please bring in the next month. Bring in your family, friends, neighbors. And that's how it grows organically. This hardly is any money on the market, hardly at all. So aside from, you know, uh, the monthly, like here are some recent deals, like here are some recent listings or available listings now, like what else are you teaching them month after month? Is it's not the same yeah. thing every month, then it's correct. We would we would actually put she's right, we'd actually put properties up. Like somebody would say, Hey, you know, I'm interested, I found one just like that, like or these in the book, I found one just like it. Can we look at it online? I bring up the calculator. What well, there's a number of calculators. We just bring these up online. Here's a here's a really good one. Uh, and plug in all the numbers and demonstrate right live right in front of people. That really is powerful. Mm -hmm. But we would also give them basic instruction. Like I, I would tell you guys, this is my teacher's job, but like in the program, we actually would give them like the forms, man, the calculators, the spreadsheets. Just give, 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 give. Right? And they will reward you for it. Not every human being is going to be a decent kind of a person, so we're going to take this stuff and roll with it, and it, that's going to happen. Bring it to the real things. <laughs> yeah, but it turns out, it turns out, from what I'm seeing, is about an 80% batting average, like the repeat people will come back because they will reward you for doing, coming from service, if that makes sense. Um, in any case, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to think about this. Uh, oh, to back to your question. So we would give them, uh, Give them an example of a wholesale, give them an example of a flip, an example of a rental. But you know what we did after a while? We started bringing in some uh, guest speakers. Like we were bringing in a, an attorney to talk about landlord tenant law, right? Big subject right now. We were bringing in a lender to talk about financing, typically the mortgage broker who has access to multiple sources of funding. Um, and it's housing inspector, right, for people who are rentals, an appraiser for people who are flipping. Uh, contractor was another one we brought in. Um, I think we want to define to bring the property manager. So yeah. people that don't want to be actively engaged to show that they're even possibility for them yeah. to run the to run the business on the yeah. side. Because I was thinking you just partner up with these people and you bring them all in to one no, session, but then much. you'd be there all day. Well, so I guess you're stretching the, the information. Oh, like every other month we would do that. Uh, Sometimes every third month. So you the main thing, Tyler, is you want to build the relationship between you and them. That's your primary purpose of this. But you can sweeten the pot by bringing in every second through with the guest speaker. And what I would tell the guest speakers is I say, look, no fee for this. I don't want anything back from it. I just want you to serve the people in the room. Do a good job, and I'll, I'll bring you back next year, too. You know, that was really my criteria. It's real simple, short and simple. Does that sound a little bit better? Yeah. I can see here. I think you should probably try it because, not just because you're asking questions, um, but when you mentioned all your, your you're, you're not that reserved. You're I, I, because you're in class talking. Would you guys agree? Yeah, no. yeah dude. You're having your arm in front of small groups. It's, it's more. It's more when there's like a big group of people and you're the spotlight of attention. You, you're you, yeah. they're all looking to you for information and yeah. It's kind of freaks me out. You get used to it. a small group to start with. You know too. I'm only weird because I'm teaching the class here. I'm required to wear a suit. Honestly, I would go business casual. 
and it, it let people relax. You want to relax too, so let them, you know. Would help me to start because I do a lot of workshops. What me was really prepared well. Like prepare big for data, right. know what you're talking about, you know. And then if someone knows something better than you or something else, say it's great. We're here to learn from each other. Absolutely. Just simply the conversation. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. Because I don't know everything either. Mm -hmm. I have a guy in a room who said, "Man, I've already bought 30 properties, and I learned a fully neat technique." And I'm like, I'm like, wow, thank you for sharing that. That really takes a big, big heart to be able to do that, you know. And uh, you really build a good community that way. So. Uh, and this was a big money maker. I'll tell you guys, my, my group, that first one, took about a year with a little off and around 200 people. And that was getting between six to eight transactions a month for that one technique. What I do, what? That's it. All the marketing is done at one time. You know? um, amazing strategy. So, in any case, uh, now you guys probably like that one, don't you? <laughs> let's do this. Let's do the commitment test for the market center. Let's say you did this. Um, every month, like we described, and uh, let's say your results were like the girls. And you, it, I, throughout the year, you went to 300 people, um, or maybe you just like by just 200. The reason I say it that way is we're a lot better at this now. We've got groups in KW that are 600, 400. One group in Chicago is 6,000 people. And Andrew Holmes, he's, going, he's not my KW now, unfortunately. And it's over like six years, too. But that's the potential. He actually buys, he, he makes money off of that. A lot of them, like not just selling properties, listings, and, and getting listings. But I mean, he now charges them. And he now charges the speakers. I never did that, he does. He made enough money last year, he bought a Bentley for cash. He charges his partners, like the lawyer? The, 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 he charges them and it. the participants. Something easy, like 10 bucks a month or something. You know? Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. I never did that because I wanted to make it purely service-oriented. Plus, I was in a public library. I didn't want to, you know. Um, <laughs> but, but he would go, he went down to a hotel room is what he did. And it just took off. He had. He had six, no, he had 13 meetups around feeding the group, and he I ended up starting his own radio program. You guys have a course right down the road. You can start your radio program course, you know? Or have a vendor do it, and you either the host, you know? Um, I, was a, I was a guest on someone else's program here in Europe, a bunch of the time. Okay, so let's do that. So you got two numbers, the booklet and the workshop. Now let's switch gears. I want to talk about how do we actually get the properties ourselves. Is that okay if we do that for a bit? Okay. Yeah, so, sorry, before you do that, are you to just again say engagement? So there's three things that went to that. Maybe you can refer to Oh, that. engagement, commitment, and, and just action, taking action. So when, they, when you see them actually participating, like taking notes and things like that, like I can tell you, so I'm a, I've been trained from KW to be able to train. And one of the things we look for, like when we roll out, we roll out a vendor's program, uh, the people that want to apply for it, we make sure the folks that are actually taking notes in class and asking questions. Because then we know there's alignment, does that make sense? Because if you're just sitting back and not really doing anything, probably you're not too engaged and we don't want to take your time. If, you know, we don't want you to take up the trainer's time. The, the program is really, that's, um, you got to be an action taker. So same thing in this, this, this scenario. You're looking for people who are action takers and you make those folks your clients. Yeah, sound good? It's interesting that you haven't mentioned in the top seven people to work with lawyers. They didn't make the top ten. They do invest though. They do. What's interesting is um, my own personal lawyer, Cliff, to this day he still doesn't invest. I've been with him for over 20 years. In fact, about three years into it, I'm like, Cliff, I'm like, I don't understand. You're, you're watching what I'm doing. You're not even asking me to make hey, you help me do that too. And uh, I, I just got my license because um, I was frustrated with those agents. Most agents weren't being trained to help me in the residential role of investing, which is really why this program's here. <laughs> so you can be the, the agent that people want to work with. And he said, fine, give me your presentation. So I did. It took about an hour because he's asked a lot of questions, almost like the engineers, right? <laughs> At the end, you know what he said? He said, okay, uh, you got me convinced. He said, let's do this, but Gary, I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. <laughs> they want to do it themselves. They want to have their own contracts. They don't want to use reports forms. I will tell you, always use your own board's forms, right? Because they're neutral, they're, they're, they meet the plain language laws, and you can always add addendums, right? And accountants? They were actually, they were pretty good, they're up there. Accountants were good, yeah. Contractors were good. Um, yeah, but the lawyers were not even in the top okay. yeah. But if you, but now guys, I gotta tell you, if you have a group of people that you're already connected with, mm -hmm. it doesn't even matter if they're artists. Mm -hmm. you keep work with them. 
Because I guarantee you, you could approach any demographic or social graphic and say, would you like to own a bunch of investment real estate? Almost every hand will go up. Right? They just got to see it and believe it, and you can help them by doing this kind of stuff. Right? Um, in fact, we've had workshops like this for, uh, actually, one we did have one for musicians, musicians who invest. Runners, like you know, runners, right? Joggers, uh, parents of preschool children, that was a big one. But think about it, what are parents of preschool children thinking of happening 15 years down the road? University, right? Um, we did one in Kissimmee, Florida for Russian speaking women. That's like a niche within a niche within a niche. <laughs> Or my guitar. Okay, you guys ready for the next one? Yeah. Alright, uh, let's do this. To save a little bit of time, can I have you take a picture? Yeah. And we don't have to write all these words down. Because I'm going <laughs> to not let you, I'm going to give you the language patterns. I just want to have you have the actual wording and you have the actual letter. Yeah, stretch your legs if you guys want. I don't mind. Um, so the bottom lady, while you're doing that, <laughs> you know it's funny. Yeah. My mom would be proud. <laughs> so, in any case, um, while you're taking pictures, let me just describe this to you. I had a client years ago at one of these four right? Four year building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four year building in that area. And I'm sending him properties to look at. Okay. And he calls up and asks, he says, Is there anything else, anything else out there? Have you ever had a client ask you, Is there anything else out there? Like, like the magicians. And the answer is yes, there is. Um, what I did was, uh, there's lots of websites you have available to you, but you know you can go to your your um, property records. You guys know that, right? You can, like if you're looking at a listing online for somebody else you want to get a listing, I mean you're going to list a property. You have to get the property record, get, like the tax ID and all that kind of stuff. That gives you access. You can access that. It gives you access to all the properties in the area, I mean, usually county level. Case like Toronto is probably at the Toronto level. But you don't have to go through the MLS, which means you get access to every single parcel out there. Have you guys done that before? Go directly to access to look at the records? Oh my gosh, yeah. What's that? I'm not sure what it is. I can't remember what it is here, but I know that I know that you have it because we looked at it. Through so, track. Through track. Yeah. You have access to MPAC. You do, that's right. Because every time you do a recording, you record a deed, like use title transfers. The tax assessor has to have the information because they might change the assessor of the property. Well, that data is called public data. Yeah. So you can access the directory. So all I did is I said, okay, computer, give me all the four plexes in that area. And the first time I did it, like 30 something properties. Now, let me do a quick pause here to do the envelope and then I'll go back to the landing. Envelope, can you write this down? Do you know how you geo Oh, geo yeah. Yeah, geo yeah, right? Geo warehouse. Geo warehouse does it. And JLR, you can also go to JLR and Geo Warehouse. Yeah. Years ago, all we had was Geo Warehouse. That's all we had. <laughs> so, in any case, envelope is number 10 legal. Number 10 legal. Right, so, if you go to Staples, stationary, look for number 10 legal. It's the shape and size. Okay? And what is all, that? What's that? What is this? What, what, oh, you're not giving me the envelope. We've tested all that. Envelope size? The envelope, yes, yeah, called number 10 legal. We've used all kinds of different shapes and sizes. Turns out number 10 legal, highest overrated. And always handwrite the recipient's name and address. Of course, always handwrite your return address too. The reason is, is um, we all know that we're all going to get our mail, we're going to get these, these glossy postcards, and all that meter mail, the barcode mail, and what happens to all that mail? Goes with the Poof. And what about the letters where your name and address is handwritten on the envelope? At least you will Probably the highest super. We don't know how to get any higher, quite frankly. So let's say I sent this, let's say Roberta, you got this. I mean, if you saw that, would you at least be curious enough to? Yeah? Yeah. So let's say Roberta gets it, okay? And she opens it up. First thing she sees is salutation, is her name, name specific, first name only. Dear Roberta, okay? I'm writing to you about your property located at 17 L. Lane and Denton. Now, if you own that property, would that, would that get your attention? Yep. So we're going to capitalize on that by using what's called a positioning statement. Here's the positioning statement. Well, first off, positioning statement, the purpose is to position Roberta to have to read what's next. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And we do that by appealing to what? The conscious mind or the subconscious mind? Conscious. Subconscious mind. Here's how we do it. Positioning statement. I'm not suggesting you sell your property if you don't want to. Now, just a little bit of an aside here. 
there's some NLP in here. What did we actually just suggest to revert it up? Sell property. Sell the property. When I first learned this stuff nine years ago, I thought, I'm going to be a psychology genius. <laughs> well, that's right. It gets even better when we're going to check this out. Whenever we start something in the negative, I'm not, she's not, he's not, you know, what is the human brain wired to go and do next? Yep, it's called it. It's a language pattern called if not, then what? So subconsciously, her brain's thinking, okay, if it's not this, then what is it? Which means she's going to want to read what's next. But what we do is we give her a called a statement of fact. However, inventory is tight right now, okay? Now, what does it mean to somebody in terms of supply and demand? We say inventory is tight. In this case, Roberta's got a four price. Mm -hmm. What's she thinking? I'm thinking inventory is tight, so I'm going to get good money for my That's place. It. She's intrigued because she's a person with a goal and she's going to control things here, right? Profit. Okay, we're going to continue that sentence in what's called a, a, a power statement, which is this. And I have clients, plural, like Mr. Matajasic in this example. Uh, all right, one quick pause here. That is a real person from our database. If you could please write this down, always get their permission first. <laughs> okay, so this letter is a demand based letter. You only use it when you know you have demand. Okay? So Mr. Mike Jassick in this example, who want to buy a property for your building, right? In this example again, just like yours in your area. Now in your opinion, each of you, what would you say is the most important part of this power statement? The name of the while. Yeah, it's the name. We've tested it guys like um, you know, you've heard of split testing or A B testing. So one batch of letters goes out with the name. Well, that turns out without the name. You measure the results, and then you switch the groups and do it again if you're really, really persistent. In any case, put the name in, response rates go up. I, I think it just makes it more real. I mean, we can all say we got clients, right? But now to name somebody by last name, would you say that's a bold move? I mean, for me, it's a guts. But boy, does it work, guys. Okay? Um, that's why I specifically sought you out. Now, remember, multiple people get a letter, but each one is name specific and property specific. We just want each person to feel special, in this case particularly the word, right? So that we can then make the offer, which is this. Even if you're just curious about what your property would sell for, please let me know and I'll to give you a free evaluation. Now guys, is there any fluff at all in that paragraph? Total skin and bones. The shorter we made it, the higher the response rate went up. Okay? Now, down here you do have, in fact, there's no branding. You can actually check this out. What do you not see up above the salutation? Letterhead. No letterhead. Here we go. It's costing you, costing you responses. Question. Yes, uh, on the geo warehouse, yes, you can find the owner's name, but quite often the investor will not be living in this property. So what's yes. your uh, JLR is what helps you with that. That's what we do with the What is that? It's called JLR. Uh, let me uh, see if I can find it real quick for you. Okay, you can also go to your, your Bureau of Corporation, uh -huh. type in a company name, so you've got to drill down, and they tell you to show you who set it up. Okay. Your you can yeah. also reverse search by name to find out if they own other properties. There we go. Um, okay. Website. I'll, I'll go. I'll go to the. Um, I go to these guys' website too and show you a list of uh, like research tools for Canada. So look down here, okay, JLR.com, and see where it says uh, professionals. Now let's just do. Uh, let's do English here in a second. You mind if I just switch to English? Okay. Real estate professionals. Real estate market analysis. I don't, I'm not going to go into because I don't have an account right now, but is you can this find out. Is this Canada as well? That this is Canada. This is Canada? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. 
Let me go show you something else here. Um, You know what, I'm not going to do this or not. I don't even know why. Uh, Pardon? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's this one? Can you talk about this? Is, this is the vendor's website. So if you go in here, if they, just check this out, guys. They pay, me, they pay me to use my name and my image. Is that crazy? <laughs> I got a, it's called a royalty. It is. Click on the members area. I don't think I'm going to leave this. I can't remember my own login and password. But if I can, I'll show you. There's a list of resources. Let's do this. Um, uh, this 12, maybe. Yeah. In any case, on the left hand panel is a list of Canadian resources. I wish I had my own computer and I could do this for you. Um, if we have time after class, guys, I'll, I'll go on my own computer and I can show you what I'm talking about. It's a whole list of Canadian resources, you know. So just know that you're, you're not alone out there. You're, you can do stuff with the building. Do you need to register to be able to access the Well, that one, you definitely got to be in your program to do that. But they give it, like, there's a, the training part and there's all the information part. The training part that you get, as a result of that, they give you all the other stuff. Like we control, the kid ever, we control the training part. All of their own website stuff, as a almost like a courtesy, they give it you access to it for free while you're in the training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me go back to the class here real quick. Uh, just remind me after class if I have time, I'll, I'll do that for you. So back to this. Um, where was I now? Oh, now be careful. I think when I was here before, we had to put our broker, my, my agent ID on there, right past my name. Okay, it's, it's about as unbranded as you can get, but you do have to let them know at some point that you are a realtor. Okay? Makes sense? Yeah. Um, how many of you, you guys like this letter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I tell you what, I when I did my work, my merger with KW, um, I, I brought in 187 active listings, uh, 55 of them because of just this one. Here, one technique. That's almost a third of the inventory. Yep. Um, in any case, uh, I will tell you this. It is based on demand. So the reality is this. Here's the benefit. It's not like it's uh, going to reduce your, your results. It's going to actually increase your results. So when we control supply, we're, we're sending this to the owner of a property that we know we have people that want to buy. We have somebody who wants to buy a forecast. Okay? Now, in real estate brokerage, we get paid two ways. We get paid the listing commission, and we get paid the buyer commission. Now, when we get paid both, what do we call that? We get double lenders. We like to have more double lenders in your business. Oh, yeah. Guys, this is how we do it. Real quick, i just tell you a big point for commercial here. We want to help build the kid out of commercial. Right here. Okay? And if you ever know a commercial agent, they always only go for one commission, we go for two or one. For one. Back to our example. Um, uh, we know that you know if you're working with Alex on the flip, um, you're going to get paid a commission when she buys the property initially, right? And when she goes to sell it, are you going to try to get that that listing too? All right. Now, if you're having a really good day, what other commission might you get? Yeah, you're the person that's going to live in the house. Yeah. This, this, is this. How many of you feel find this somewhat appealing? This is. It's more of like a business, right? And for you, if you have an interest personally in investing, it's like right up the alley. Okay, yeah. let's do this. Um, let's do the commitment test on this one. All right, you know it's based on demand. The letter, well, let's just say for the exercise, you just do 25 of these a month. That's all. 25 letters a month for 12 months. As 300 letters go out, please write from your market. It's the same people as well. Yeah, direct response. Keep marketing the same person or same group of people. Now the real world is your your volume. Like you might you might set up 47 vendors today because you need a duplex, and then Wednesday comes around you need an aplex. You might set out only 21 letters, right? Because there's fewer aplexes than duplexes. But the reality is, is um, you generally will have multiple letter campaigns at the same time for different demands. Does that make sense? And for flipping, it's 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 actually. You know, you can use this letter for helping your own documents too, not just the flippers, right? We've used this for expires, 
Fizbo's, which was not all out of liquor, but I would tell you out of London, when they tried all that 2% discount burgers, it actually stuck out there. Do you guys know that? In London, a lot of commissions are only 2%. Yeah. Yep. Um, up here, it's much easier. So, in any case, um, what's that? It's, uh, it's going to, it'll change again. I, like, people are concerned about, you know, the big, like, you go to a failure and everybody's like, stay away from Zillow and Trulia. I really don't let them, or Amazon, that's the big fear right now. Amazon's going to take over. The thing is, guys, it's still a relationship business. I mean, we still got to actually talk to people. That's why I think we're always going to be okay. I, I was around since they took, put the NLS online. Everybody thought, oh my gosh, here goes the most industry. They don't need us anymore. Everything is online now. I'm like, I don't, I'm not seeing that. People still, still need us. And we were right. We're still here. You know? So, yes, sir. So, if you're sourcing the buyers and the sellers for the fourplexes, are you going to offer them in your letter um, a commission discount? No. Like, because you're acting on both sides? You're going to ask me anyways. <laughs> so I don't yeah, know. Because I've seen, yeah. actually here in Toronto, yeah. um, there's a couple of big players in the investment area. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they, um, because they're acting for both the buyer and seller, they offer that discount right. on the commission. Yeah, I, what I would do, I would rather the mask for it, but I would tell you, I know one of them personally, you guys know who Craig Proctor is, right? Yeah. Been around for decades. Um, I, I know him for quite a while. Their big thing is they would say, look, we're going to list you your house and not even charge you a listing commission. Because they're banking on getting the buyers and then getting those buyers listings and that kind of thing. Where they'll say, if we don't sell your house, we'll, we'll buy it, right? But if you look at the fine print, it's not exactly, you know, yeah. So uh, what, I, what I do is I, I learn to really be, feel things, speak, and act like a business person. And I generally have had an easier time collecting my commission. Because if you don't, if you make it too easy, and let's think about it. Our tax accountant, would we ask our tax accountant to cut his rate because he's been doing our taxes every year? Probably not. You know? So, but people have been conditioned to treat us that way because we let them do it. So if you put on your investigation hat and be that business person, you can usually do a better job of building a better business around that model. Does that make sense? You gotta own it. I mean, now I wish I could tell you if you flip the switch and the money comes out, but that's not realistic. I'd be, I'd be irresponsible to have you think that. It's the reality is, is you gotta take this and actually go with it and build it, build the business around it. Yeah. It does that help a little bit or yeah, I, I can see your rules are spinning. Are you, uh, I'm just trying to think, like I agree with you what you're saying in terms of targeting the specific yeah. market. But your experience has told you that. I, I think yeah. you know, somehow people want always want to save on the commission. Oh yeah. And so I know you are offering the professional advice. Yeah. You're doing the numbers, all of that. I will tell you what we'll tell you what I do do is Tyler brought this up in the break. In those clubs of the investor groups, sometimes we'll start the band together to buy properties. And if they get bigger, bigger properties, I will definitely lower my percentage rate on those. That's I would do that. But remember this, um, um, Peter, right? Yeah. right. So let, let the past be in the past. Um, I know it sounds like counterintuitive. Well, if I do that, I'll, I'll be uncompetitive. But just try it. Right, guys? Like, just try it once and see what happens. You never know what the answer might be. OK, fine, Peter. You're, I can see how you're worth it, because you're doing more than most other agents are doing. You know? uh, and if it doesn't work, then keep doing what you're doing. But at least give yourself the opportunity. Yeah, because I think you're a pretty good guy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. No, I was just almost going to say, like, you know, I always feel like there's always going to be a market for Rolls Royces out there and stuff like that. Like, people don't have a problem really paying more. They just want right. to have the value attached. You know what I found out with the professionals, like the guys who described really professionals, typically the business owners, they will value what we're doing here more than people that are. Like the, the typical uh, investors, so back to your point, Peter, you're absolutely right. There are going to be people that will not appreciate you. With the people that do appreciate us for doing this kind of stuff, that's how we would appreciate them in our, in our marketing. Um, I can tell you, I've had a lot of uh, vendors in my business, and I've never had any of them ever say, "Would you take our cut?" You know, we never even bargained because I would. They would. They never say, "Why don't you make me your dentist?" They never said that. They just were glad to have all this, all this stuff here, because most other agents weren't doing this. It was just like a crafting, you know. So, in any case, uh, good questions. I can see you guys are you're engaged. <laughs> so. All right, so let's do the commitment test. The reality is you'll do way more letters than this, but let's just say you do 25 months and that's all. 
how many transactions do you believe you're going to get from this technique over the next 12 months? So, so 300 letters go out. But back, back to your point, that, yes, the reality is you'll do multiple letters um, throughout, throughout the year to the same group of people. And, uh, now, when they respond, you don't have to be able to make that. Good. Everybody okay so far? 5%? Um, actually, actually have you, has everybody written the number now? I'll give you some conversion rates, okay? Um, all, of the, all of the booklet, all of the response rates, all the, the, the folks who respond to the booklet, the conversion rate is generally over 100%. Because some people won't buy anything, but some people will buy more than one. So if you look at the number of transactions per focus, it's pretty good. Of the respondents, okay? Uh, the respondent rate is about 8%, okay? The letter, the conversion rate of the letter is about 15.1%. Now, if you hand write it, it goes to over 18%. Because remember, we're pre-selecting these folks. I pre-selected Roberta. Like, I know who she is. I know she owns a property that this guy wants. So I can speak these language patterns and be authentic about it, right? Does this take a little bit of effort up front? It does, but once you build it, it literally is like a machine, okay? Uh, in any case, um, Let's do this. Let's add up our three numbers. How about that? If we're going to have a wee bit of fun there. It seems like we're starting to, you guys are starting to get kind of quiet on me. <laughs> Who wants to have just a wee bit of fun? For three minutes. Okay. Good. I'll, I'll get the beer truck outside and we'll get ready for the wrapper. So, um, they're going to win. Here we go. All right. All right. So let's add up your three numbers and then just call them out. Um, if you get, does anybody have their numbers added up so far? The three in the booklet. Uh, the workshop and the and the um, letter. Yeah, it, I know it feels like you're guessing, but your intuition. What is the workshop for the person? The workshop was the second campaign we did. Mm -hmm. That was the live in person one. I just don't recall. We'll probably add the conversion on that. Deals. Oh, um, do I don't know if we have a conversion rate on that one. I know no. mine was probably 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 with between that six and eight percent actually the same as the other one. Yeah. Um, come to think of it. No, no, no. My conversion rate on that was probably down like 4%. But well, you know why I like it? I'm only doing it once a month. When you have 100 people, that's four transactions. All right? On average, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I'll take that. <laughs> you know? Some people, honestly, they're just going to be tire kickers. You'll never get them into any transaction. But it's okay. You're providing a public service. Just focus on the only average. Yes, sir? Is the booklet inviting them to the workshop? Are they related in that um, way? We actually teach it, we teach them independent of each other, but just like Diane Price said, absolutely, when you get into the game and you start um, exercising these campaigns, like I just gave you three of them, there's like 30 different campaigns. So you'll learn to see the synergies, like your intuition will kick in, you'll see where you can combine certain techniques with other techniques, right? But when we teach it, uh, Tom, we, it really is um, more like a ladder, like we just take that first step, master it, and then you can do the next one. Our objective is you do, you do three of them, minimum, right? Because we should have three ways to make money. But, uh, but you'll see yourself, the combinations. Plus, if you do do this, there's like a weekly session we do this live every week. You're going to hear all these other people doing it. They're, they're going to say, I did this the last time, and here's what I got. And actually, we'll share with you their campaigns. That's pretty good stuff. That's you know, just part of our culture. And the other thing, too, is let's face it, guys. I'm just here in one market center in one worker's company. The odds are dramatically in your favor, right? Because how many people are doing this on Remax right now? The world of page. You know, it's all the Probably eight. You're like one percent, one percent, one percent, one percent. It's amazing. I wish I could. I will always tell you. Um, my third year doing this, just doing some of the things. That's even some of the things I talk today. I did seven hundred ninety-three thousand GCI in a market where the average home price was about one fifty. Because all those repeat clients. I was up on the stage, and I'm like, holy mackerel. I didn't know I was doing anything spectacular. I thought everybody worked that hard, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but I did have to slow down. It cost me my, my first ring, right? And Because uh, it wasn't being such a good good uh, club being able to be Mr. Empire Builder. We're not listening to Harley. So for all the guys in the room, I know it's fun to build the Empire. Just right, be a good guy, right? Right, gals? Be a good husband, okay? Be a good dad, a good friend. Don't let this stuff run away with you. It will. It's right, yeah, all of us. And I, I can tell you, when you start making money, you learn how to do it. it it's just like, um, like how many of you went to university to study some other field? 
the accounting, right? Making money, guys, it's actually that the, the psychological, emotional process of learning is exactly the same. You're just learning a different discipline. Does that make sense? The good thing about Canada and our vendors is it's all education based. You don't have to spend a fortune on this. You don't have to spend $50,000 for some other outside person. Right? Okay, let's go back to what we're doing. So, uh, so Tyler, what would your heart tell you if you did these three things today or the next year? What would you, what would you, what, how many transactions do you believe you would get? Uh, the workshop, I guess it depends how many people are showing up in the workshop, which I don't really, I can't really visualize yet, yeah. but say you had consistently 20 people showing up once a month, mm -hmm. um, I would hope that if they're showing up every month or probably half of them, 60% would buy something. Uh, I don't think it's going to be 60%, but what I'll do is just have you just like trust your intuition and uh, so you're using your, your, your analytical mind right now, which yeah. is good. But when you do the exercise, we just want you to just like, boom, whatever pops in your heart, and write it down, you know? Number 30. 30, okay. Is that for all three? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. I think 25 to 30 okay. additional 30. off of all three. Okay, how many, uh, Leslie, how many closings last year? Or last I'm a new agent. So oh, God, last year. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm like working on 15 right now. Nice. Okay. I uh, like the attitude. Okay, Roberta, saving 30, 30-ish. 30 okay. And what was your, how many, um, how many transactions just the last 12 months? Or actually, you're on a team, you're part of a team? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know, 15, 20? Well, that's good in this area. My gosh, you're doing pretty good if you're doing that. Right? <laughs> how many of you feel like, like you really don't, how many of you have ever had a trainer before? Like a coach or a trainer, anybody? I have one, yeah. All right. Would you agree that none of us, I mean, I, I do that too, but none of us really need someone like me to call you up twice a month and say, hey, did you wake up and do X, did you do your 20th letters? Versus being able to call your mentor and say, I want to do the letter can you walk me through the process of how to actually do the letter? How many like that? Tactics or strategies? Most people that come to class, you don't need me to motivate you. You're already here. You just need tactics or strategies. Would you agree? So, so in any case, um, uh, Tyler, okay. Uh, don't say 30 because they say 30. You can't if you want to. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, I'll say 40. There you go. <laughs> right. Oops. Right. Uh, uh oh. That did say dry erase marker. Sure does. Was this the board? Don't worry, we'll, we'll plan it. That's okay. right. Yeah. 40. And are you also pretty new tolerant or what's your? No, I'm not. Okay, yeah. how, many, how many do you remember like in the last 12 months? Or just the 2018, if you know your numbers from 2018, we can use that. Uh, 15. 15. You guys are doing pretty good, man. Uh, Paul, what'd you get? Uh, I, I, I thought 30 as well. I just thought you know, 10%, I think, of okay. you know, like, kind of 300 contacts. Okay. That's good. That's reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think I did uh, like 12 sales and 8 leases last year, so. Good. Okay. Okay. Alex? I did probably closer to 17, 18, something like that. Okay. I did last, month, last, last year. Oh, last year. I'm sorry. Okay. And. Um, mm. I would aim for 8% of 300. Okay. So that's pretty close to 28. Uh, 24. 24. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, at least remember, remember how many work? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would go for a question like 30. Okay. Yeah. And I was an agent last year. Till date, I had done two leads. To 20? How, how many how many tracks are you? Two. Two. Yeah. Okay, you're in the game. Congratulations. <laughs> you remember what you wanted to do like after you did your first one, what you wanted to do the next day? Do <laughs> more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the other thing was like uh, I just want more clients to get me engaged. That yeah. Well can you see some of this today helping you be able to do that? Yes. It's all about the relationship building. Yes. Yeah. You know what the, really, the real key here is, this guys? 
like there's different levels of marketing. Like in here we call this the money circle. For me personally, that was four to six clients a week, okay? And I was getting between two and three transactions a week. This is their gate, like the, like this is where money's changing hands. You're the buyer selling, so I'm making commissions. Out here, maybe 30 people active, like email, phone call once a week. That's it. Out here, my database back then literally never exceeded 167 people. That was it. Because I just focused more on the investors. But what we did is we focused the marketing on this part in here and in here. We don't really focus the marketing on this outside stuff out here. Does that make sense? So we go right from the heart of the relationship. Okay. Okay. Uh, what'd you get? Rory, I, I was in, I'm a completely new agent. I'm only a month or two in it. So. What were it? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, thirty looks like a reasonable number now. So. Let's do let's do asterisks over here. What you're saying, thirty? Yeah, ten okay. percent. So, oh, I should do this backwards. Well, that's okay. We got to be different at some point. <laughs> okay, Peter, what'd you get? Uh, I would say about twenty um, percent. Um, uh, response on the uh, mm -hmm. on these things, um, and uh, I like I, I had a couple large deals last year, and funny enough, you mentioned contractors because uh, I I just kind of do the uh, investor stuff, and there was a contractor where the money was no object and stuff, and um, nice. so yeah, I think a lot of what you're saying does make sense to me. You know what's interesting about investors, guys? You'll have more of them operating from a cash basis. Have you notice that? More yeah. than sort of the other occupants, yeah. yeah. So you had, how many last year do you think you had? Uh, I had a, uh, two large deals last year. Good. And what would your projection be going forward, just using the things we did today? Uh, I'd like to increase it to 20. Okay. <laughs> um, from the heart, just boom, put it out. Yeah, yeah I'd like to see myself doing more. Any, any, what, what the number? Like what kind of number? 20, 40, 80, 60? 20. I would 20. say 20. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So I'm not trying to put you on the spot. No problem. <laughs> we went, we're, we're, there's a reason for this. I know you'll know in about two, two minutes. So, okay. So I um, part time agent last year was slow. I did two deals. Okay. I'd be happy with 10. Okay. Excellent. Are you, do you want to keep your, your day job going yes. forward? Yes. Well, that's the right Okay. I mean, you're that's bringing. But I've seen what some of those have done, right? Yeah. Well, it's all about being. I mean, we all have the right to be happy. You just want to be happy. And if you like what you're doing, we don't want you to stop doing that. You know. <laughs> so, okay. Well, here's the cool thing, guys. Is these are your numbers from your heart. I, I tried to be careful during the class not to give you conversion rates and stuff. We want you to up your numbers. So these are your numbers from your heart. It's what you believe, right? So here's the difference. I know the numbers like for the program, but that doesn't matter. What matters is what you believe. Because when you believe it, you can. Sound like bold? <laughs> We're always trying to like, the reason we have usually, we teach this after bold, is when bold gets you pumped up, and this gives you like real like meat and potatoes, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. Um, successful people write these things down, guys. We always write down our projections, because when we write them down, they're more likely to become Real, it goes from in here to out here, okay? You start to use what we call your RAS, reticular activation system. And perfect example is if any, either of you bought a new car, like in, this year, anybody buy a new car? What would you get? Uh, an X1. X1? Did you notice about the time you bought it, how many more XOs you started seeing out there on the road? <laughs> yeah. So what happens is your RAS does two things that prevent you from seeing things that it doesn't think you need to see, right? And it, and it opens up your mind to see the things it thinks you want to see or need to see. So if you can apply that to the case of buying a car in our own production in real estate, what can we do? We can think and act and, and be intentional about it, about what we want. And then all of a sudden, you will, how many of you feel like, like me coming here today was sort of like timely based on something you notice you get more investors recently, all of a sudden I show up? Isn't that amazing how that happens? I wish I could tell you it was me, I'm like a magician, but it's a regular person. But it, it never fails. And I think that I think our leadership is very keen to understand that this probably is a good time for us if you guys are interested. So 
And it gets shot. Uh, before where like you know you know an ad and you know like the whole jingle for the for the ad, but then you don't actually know the product it's for. Uh, <laughs> but then one day you're looking for that kind of product, whatever, whether it's like a car or insurance or something, and you're like, oh yeah, that's like that jingle. That, yeah, that jingle or whatever for that yeah. company. It's yeah. so weird. Yeah. I can remember jingles from when I was a kid, and the product name was still have the products anymore. But they just get sort of made it, made it or break. Now, Keller Williams doesn't do that. We're not playing any mind games here. We just, we just want to help you really be successful in what, you're doing, what you want to do. And if you do have a real sincere interest in this part of the business, um, you just raise your hand and let me know. In fact, how many, do either of you, how many of you like the content from today's class? Does it feel like, I mean, how many feel like I can actually, I feel like I can do this, right? I can do, be more successful with the investors. All right, are any of you interested in making, like sincerely making this a bigger part of your business model? All right, for those of you who are interested, um, actually, yeah, I actually want to show you. I'll, I'll show you how you can do this. The, the vendor, for those of you who are late, um, um, I'm a KW instructor. The, the class that I taught you does come from one of our vendors. So there's KWU, there's MAPS, and there's vendor programs. Uh, these guys are going through the approval process, and the results are really good. Okay, they're, they're pretty good at what they do. I went through it myself. I can tell you firsthand, it's just it, it works. I mean, you got to do the work. You got to you got to meet me halfway. Uh, like I'm not coming to your kitchen table and <laughs> doing your letters for you. You feed me waffles. I like do that. <laughs> okay. So real quick, um, I think I need the case study on that. In any case, she made a lot of money doing a letter. That's actually she made seventy thousand bucks on her first commission. She was a brand new agent, by the way. How about that? That was a brand new Tesla. That's what a Tesla cost. Okay, so in any case, here's the folks, uh, actually they changed this up over here. All right, so here's what this is for. This will help you decide what you want to do here. Um, the folks that have done this, the number one result of our questioning how does your business look now after the year is they no longer care so much about the traditional open houses, light show, with cold calling your door knock. Anybody in that category besides me? You know, kind of can't even try to get us door knock, cold call. You don't do that with investors. In fact, sometimes the other occupants don't like it either, right? Um, you want the freedom of you like the freedom of your license. You just want steadier cash flow, uh, more business-like relationships, more control of your schedule. And guys, I gotta tell you, my, my youngest is she's gonna be going. To, I gotta run. Thanks. Hey, nice to meet you, Tom. Appreciate it. She'll be in grade 12. She doesn't even like she used to. But the fact is, is this allowed me to be home more with my kids. Okay, um, I didn't I didn't pay attention to my wife like I should have, but they could have been with my kids, and this allowed me to do that. Okay, uh, more clients and more commissions. Uh, great strategy. If you're new to the area, new to the business guys, this is a great way to get started because it allows you to operate in, in a vacuum. You know what I mean? Uh, marketing is usually free or inexpensive. You only got to meet and educate the investors once. That's remember we talked about that in the break, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in any case, um, the right investor to their own due diligence. We're going to do that for them. Somebody that was Peter. You and I had that discussion, right? Uh, obviously, repeat business and more more referrals. Ah, you're, they got this thing out of back here. In any case, here's some examples. Uh, he already had property management in place, just like I did, and it doubled in the year of the training, and he also bought seven more of his own units. Now, does that look appealing to any of you? Like, in addition to your commissions, you want to do some of your own? All right, good. Yeah. It's critical once that business, right? It'd be, it'd be it helps a lot. If you have a, like, I know for me, yeah. In fact, we do tell you. Um, you make mistakes on your own properties. Go ahead. You know, it's interesting. You guys know who Robert C. is, right? So he came to our mastermind group about four years ago. And by the way, some of the group, some of the guys in the group are from your area. And we do a lot of investing together here and elsewhere. Um, Rock Thomas is in the group. Um, you guys know, um, what's his name, Benson? Um, he's in the Queen Street Market Center, kind of a tall dude. Yeah, he's he's James guy. Yes, he's the mastermind group of one of us. And in uh, any case, um, we learned this that you don't want to just have a job or just a business or just invest. You want to have definitely at least a business and invest. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And preferably three things. In any case, so, um, Grace Swain, um, she manages them through here. So she buys them, she has other people buy them, and she manages them too, three streams of income. Real theme here about three streams of income. Uh, Kate Wells, I remember her. Um, first day, first script, first client. She literally texted me overnight, said, Gary, I just want to tell you I cracked the books and I got my first client. Would you say she was an early adapter? Yeah. I love students to take action right away because I, I mean, who gets the, 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 who gets the goodies in this world? The people who take action. I mean, that's really the, in fact, 
The only difference between you today and where you want to be tomorrow is simply taking action. I wish I could tell you which. I wish I could get an action pill. <laughs> I'd be enjoying it. But in any case, uh, John McCann is another pilot. We get a lot of pilots in KW for some reason. In any case, joining KW did the training and simplified his prospecting. Investors are simple and efficient. Good source for team business. Oh, look at this guy. You look happy? <laughs> Here, here's what happened. Um, I mean, his, this picture is probably before he got me out or he, he heard, I was on this television program, a business program, after I did my merger. And he called and said, I want to speak to Mr. Wilson. I want to be an investor agent. And they got me on the phone. I said, well, Dave, I don't, I just noticed my work as a kid. We didn't have any training. I said, if you join, I'll train you myself. You can be on the team. He's with ERA. ERA's had a presence up here for a while. They're not, they're not still here on the ERA. Yeah, I think, I think actually kind of booted them out. Uh, Exit's in Mr. Saga, by the way. Yeah. So in any case, um, he said, oh, I'm going to quit that. He said, because I'm stuck. He kept telling me he was like, he's working, 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 and he's stuck. Like, nothing's changing. Anybody feel like you're stuck before? It's time to get messing around if that's the case. Do, do something. The, the, it's the action thing. Honestly, just take action today to generate tomorrow's results. That makes sense? Because if we don't do that, tomorrow's results are going to look like today's results. Okay, well, there's one surefire way to do it. Um, actually, here's why this is important. Remember the first two paragraphs I held up, held up beginning of class, the Asian mixture, transaction mixture? What that means is, in any given day, nine of us are competing for several transactions. We measure it across the board. 99% of agents doing the same marketing day in, day out, to the same stake of results. Less than five listings actually sell for your agent. That's it. <laughs> that's why you got numbers. That's why some of you are crushing it, and some of you are. You know, just look at be better, right? 80% um, of us to make our living expenses. Did you know that 90% of agents, it's not on here, I just looked this up, 90% of agents don't even renew their license the first time. I was shocked when I saw that, right? Um, in any case, uh, only 5% of us actually do thrive. Who wants to be the five that thrives, by the way? Okay, well, we gave me a page to show you right out of our training material. Um, I don't know if I can find it in my book. Right. What they, they figured is, um, by now, these are the people that give us just to do this, but you would be getting this. I mean, you feel like you're getting the big picture? Yeah. The whole thing about expanding your license? Actually, write this down. This is the, this is the fast version. Um, you can use this as an affirmation if you want, if you want to do this. Write this. Now, my license is an income-producing asset. My license is an income-producing asset. that I will leverage to generate multiple streams of, that's it, I knew you were doing it. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure, yeah. Um, so in any case, uh, here's the deal. Let's say you never met me, and I never came to teach a class, if you're just working with other options, okay? It feels good when the market's going great, but I promise you when the market drops, and some of you have been around want to know that what happens is that market shrinks. We don't want you to be a risk, we want you to put on your investor agent hat, come over and work with someone like me. Um, when I first got my first mentor, I went out and bought 10 years, actually before I got a mentor, in 10 years I bought exactly one property. Finally get myself a mentor, I bought 10 properties in the next year. I needed property management, decided I'm going to build my own, thank goodness I did, because you made you get, you get the leasing fee, the lease of vacancy, you get the lease application fee. And it's, they have restrictions up here on this stuff, like the lease application fee. But in any case, you just, you'll make money doing it. Um, we charge uh, lease renewal fee, pet fee, smoker fee, nuisance call fee. We charge the owners a 10% override on maintenance and repairs, which is kind of typical. You know who else we charge on maintenance and repairs? The contractors, 10%. I mean, we pay 25% for our referral business. We're just telling them 10% and we give them jobs, and we also guarantee they get paid. Now, how is it we can guarantee they get paid? Because it's part of the rent. That's it. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, here's why I guarantee tell a license. Um, so look at the Anaheim Family Renewal Reporting, uh, Chapter 7. He's on a panel with Jay Packerson and one other guy, I can't remember his name. Talked about mortgage, which is coming your way soon. He, uh, property management is an incubation, okay? And the third thing was insurance. So he didn't talk more about that. But I'm pretty sure insurance is coming our way at some point. But property management is big to you because when you have property management, 
Have you ever worked with a property management company before? Yeah. You've got data not only of the owners and the renters, but you've also got contact information on all the related parties, like the, the attorneys, inspectors, yeah. inspectors, the municipal people, the lenders, the appraisers, it just goes on and on. And Alex, what can we do with all of that contact information? Market to them. Bingo. That's why you're in elections guys. So if you're wondering why the timing on this is twofold, number one is I know you just had more recently. Um, we want to now give you something to actually execute. But also, um, Gary Keller doesn't do stuff just for himself. He going to make this available to us. I don't know how it's going to look, I don't, but I'm ready, waiting for it. Um, I like flippers personally. It's more fun. I mean, it's more fun to work on a flip, but I also know this, right? Alice is going to buy the property. She's going to, you're going to get a commission on that. She's going to resell it and get that commission. 30% of the time, you get the buyer. <laughs> and what does that, that buyer have to do sometimes before they close on this property? Sell so, them. So, no, it's four possible commissions, all because you decided to do this. And if you ever, if either of you are struggling right now, like with the traditional owner occupied business, just get yourself some flippers and do the program if you want to to get the flippers. And then you can get this business within that context. Does that make sense? Every time you do a work with a flipper, you're going to get some other occupied business. Does this make sense, guys? You guys like this? Yeah. Right. I can go over all these, but I'll just kind of hold off. But the reality is this. We really do want you to take that license and leverage it. Get, get multiple streams of income coming in. Number one, I mean, with more commissions help right now. Number two is get more knowledge in the field of investing, right? Kind of makes sense. So the number three, all of us can finally go out there and do more of our own investing. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> Not too bad for money after me. <laughs> and better than yesterday, where, where we go to church is so far out, it's like 12 people show up because it's far from farming community and the farmers can't go to church. They, they send the kids and the, the wives and everything. But in any case, um, um, here's the thing, guys. We already have our license. I mean, we're already out there helping other people, helping them build wealth and income for themselves with our license. Does it make sense for us to help ourselves build wealth and income while we're at it? Yes. Okay. And would you like to help doing that? Yes. Okay. So let me just, I promise I'd show you this. Let me just show you who you gave me enough of these. So this is from your market center. Um, let me hand these out. So this, this is called a program guide. If you're really generally interested, I'll take about 15 minutes and show you how this, how this works. Um, and then you, you have to be in class to apply to be in the program. Um, here, here we're going to thank you. Thank you. Can I take this? Can uh, I take this? Yes. yes. Hey, the, the way it works for is if you think if you think you're interested, um, they give each region a certain head count to work with. And each market center has its own chunk of that head count. Yeah. I don't know what the individual chunks are. What I tell people is, um, if you really are sincerely interested, I mean, I can show you the form, but you got to you got to. Um, um, you kind of speak sooner than later. Because what will happen is I'll, I'll teach at um, St. Catharines, Hamilton, and then I've got Kitchener, Burlington, and Queen Street. And that's it for this time of the region. Okay. So whatever spots you guys don't use, they just go to the next market center. So it's kind of a timing thing. It's either, you know, you can, you can wait till I come back two years later. That's okay. Uh, or you can go to another region and take one of their spots. Well, when's it taking place? Uh, we actually start, so what will happen is um, anybody who's interested, you just say, yeah, I want to do this and I'll, I'll, help, I'll show you how to do the process, mm -hmm. the application. They don't do anything to the next day. And once they do, you get your, your welcome email that has all the, like, here's everything I had to do to get started. And they literally start at, like that week. So you'll, you'll hear me. Matter of fact, you could be on the call tomorrow night. You could be on tomorrow night's webinar. We're talking about trust, real estate trust. How do you buy real estate inside yeah. of trust? Um, that would be a really good one for some of you guys because you've got a lot of affluent people right here. And I guarantee you, I know the buying properties are trusted. We've seen it. Yeah. Uh, but yes, let me finish this. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good to meet you, Roberta. Yes, you as well. And good luck. Whatever's going on with the flip. If you want to, um, if you look me up, Gary Wilson at KW.com, I don't mind if you call. I mean, yeah. If anybody's stuck on this transaction, just tell me. I'll see if I can help you out with it. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you. Right, so let me get through this, guys. It'll make a lot more sense. Um, I don't have any extra booklets, so I'm going to kind of allow you to go through this with you and kind of wait a little bit. Uh, real quick, uh, requirements. It does take about two hours a week to go through the learning. It's six weeks of learning, two hours a week. So show of hands, who's got two hours you can devote to the learning? All right, don't have enough money. Um, I'll tell you in a minute what this thing costs. Uh, I think I actually already did it by mistake. It's, it's affordable. As a matter of fact, they actually let you pay off over time. It's, it's cheap. Um, 
just during the rollout phase, by the way. All right, once they finish the rollout, it's gonna, they're going to go to like the match level. In any case, now's not a good time. Uh, pretty sure Gary Keller set the record straight on that <laughs> four years in a row, right? Don't know enough. Um, now, Tyler brought this up. Do either of you feel like you would feel better if you knew more about investing first? Yeah. Well, the cool thing is, guys, is you're going to learn how to invest. I mean, literally, including wholesaling, oddly enough. I have to teach you because it's part of your marketplace. But flipping, my yeah. rentals, management rentals, it's all in there. Do you drill into data as yeah. well? Yeah. Like yeah. mean where to flip and what areas and what Precisely. Areas? Like it's all data data oriented actions and decision making. The reason is is um, you're working with I mean let's face it, between the things that people wanna need help on the most are usually their, their relationships, their health, physical, mental health, and what's the third thing? Money. And you're helping them with one of the three things. So you're gonna build long term relationships, but we just wanna make sure you have the right tools to help more people do this. Right? Which means we make more commissions. I should definitely make this part of class today. I'm going to take a picture and have everyone make a slide. In any case, the cool thing is, is you're going to, you can use this for yourself too. Uh, also, uh, I will follow through. Uh, the way they designed it is it's very, um, it's called progression based. Here, I'll show you. Progression based learning. So, what happens is um, it only takes like an hour or two a week to get to that part where you can actually mark it and have the knowledge base to, to, to be effective. Does this make sense? So um, it's progression based, so you just got to give it an hour or two a week. At first it's going to feel kind of unusual because it's not like your traditional Ignite and things like that. We don't just we don't do that stuff, right? Okay, here's our three parts. If you can write on the left hand side of your that pa that panel there, just write same time on the front cover like right, uh, right there. All three of these parts begin at the same time. Okay. Part one is the learning part. Um, this is where you do have to crack a book for about an hour a week. You do get different versions. You get all three audio and visual written. Just take them all and just do what works best for you. Everybody has different learning styles. At this level, though, we do like to form study groups, quite frankly. You don't have to, but your region is going to have a study group. You might as well join, right? In fact, have either, how many of you have been in a study group before for any purpose? Boot camp, Bible study, college, university, right? Again, we do agree it's, it's, it's good stuff. So we measure it in the marker centers that produce, the marker centers that have study groups produce more of those that hangs down. In fact, how many of you would like to be a study group? Like if you were to do this, would you, you want to be part of it? All right. All right, part two is we all work together. I am, I am included here, I lead this personally. Um, I, I am a part of the product and my role is to guide you through the program. And this is one way we do it. This is live every single week. 7 p.m. Eastern, every single week, different day of the week. We dig into the content. We share these marketing campaigns. You can ask all the questions you want. There's like 30 marketing campaigns. Um, and that's recorded every week, so if you miss one or two, just relax because you're going to get the recording next anyway. In any case, um, how do you like that, by the way? I mean, how would you like to have Diane Price's booklet on engineers who use this time in Ancaster? <laughs> yep. In any case, the third part, is maybe the most important, not because of me, but, but guess, guess who your trainer is? <laughs> Hope I passed a million like your stuff. Um, real quick, I do want to make a plug for KW training. Guys, we really do need trainers for this thing. I mean, pretty soon they're going to either go independent or we're going to buy them. I don't know which way it's going to go. We're hoping to obviously they buy it. KW buys it. But the thing is, is um, there's so much demand. There's a team of waiting list to be in the program. Not, you can you can be in this because you went in the class here, but if you don't do it like um, uh, Roberta, if she calls up next week and I've already finished um, the last market center, she'll literally either have to go to another region and do it there, like I'll be in New England uh, throughout the summer, or she has to wait two years. That's the waiting list, you know. So, um, in any case, uh, we need trainers, and I'm here to ask you. This is a little bit of a sidebar. Do you if you have any interest at all in teaching at some point? Oh, you do? Oh, God bless you. So what we do, Alex, is we have you do the training, obviously, learn everything, and then we waive the 75 transaction rule, as long as you develop three competencies, and we can have you teach up here in the region. Sound good? You probably have to go to um, Montreal and Ottawa. we got three market centers in Ottawa, uh, one in Montreal. Just once here, that's all. Does that sound okay? Everything else is right here. And you can come out and see me at London, by the way. We've got a market center up there. <laughs> sound good? Yeah. Okay. 
All right, so what we, what we do, this means for you and I that we actually work one on one too. So when we go through the marketing campaigns, um, each one has its own set of instructions we call a launch sequence. I'm actually going to guide you through step by step how to go through the launch sequence. How do you like that? There's no more, like, what do I do? No more guessing, okay? All right, so, so far, are you guys okay? You like the three part approach in the running? Yeah. All right, part one is made up of all of these modules, okay? Uh, module one, we build on what we learned today, all that data stuff, Alex, that's the first thing we do, okay? Second part is the legal stuff. That's right, that's how you, this is the investing part. Legal stuff is number three. Number four is on the marketing. Number five is the multiple streams. Um, actually, write this down. This is, this is the objective given at the outset of the program, is that you get three streams of income. You just you pick whatever you want you want. But our objective is we don't let you go until you develop three streams. Okay? That way you're, you're locating when the, when the shift occurs. Um, all right, that's module five. Uh, module six is all the financing. We know you've got um, we know you've got a lender already to work with, but what we're showing you is what your investors are doing. Because they don't like, um, like they like creative financing sometimes, they'll do private partnerships. Remember you asked, who was asking about people working together like in groups? Yeah. Well, your workshop will do that sometimes for you. Uh, they're also buying within their, their RSPs, okay? We're literally showing you everything you need to help your clients succeed so they can do more of this. You know, which means we can make four commissions. All right, so those are the six learning modules. The rest of it, this part here makes up this. This is us working together group level, okay? And this is us working together one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody with me so far? Yeah. All right, so everything you get, um, here's in your program, you're, you're gonna get all everything, quite frankly, all the training modules, all the calculators, the spreadsheets. So you don't have to go um, find these, they actually give them to you in original format, like a Word docs, Excel spreadsheets, things like that. All the marketing, uh, multiple streams of income, um, Due diligence clauses, these are legal clauses to protect our clients and us, by the way. A limited email support, uh, the weekly webinars for the year, and the strategy sessions. What do you guys think? They do a pretty good job of building the. It's pretty robust. So, who wants to find out what this thing costs? Hey. How do they end? I wish you would just tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in all seriousness, the reason they do it this way is class number one, we want you to have a good class first. And if you're, if you're good with the class, then you don't have to stick around. If you do want to make this part of your business, I am required to show you how it's administered first. Does that make sense? Then you can make a more educated decision. We want you to make it based on the facts, not just, like, we know you want to make more money. We get that. But we want to make sure this is in alignment with how you want your business to grow. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So we paid, uh, actually, we paid more. I think I paid 12300 or something. In any case, um, that's a week, the pilot program. You, you don't have to pay anything close to that. But we paid twelve grand. And we broke ourselves into three groups. This was the pilot five years ago this summer, actually. That was five years ago next month we started the pilot program. So we broke ourselves into three groups. One group worked with flippers, one group worked with landlords, the other group did their own investing. The group worked with flippers, the average flipper flipped four homes that year, four or something. And let's say you did that right here in Toronto. Where's my daily planner? Um, your average transaction of uh, Let's say your average commission is twenty-five thousand. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Not normal for the area. And let's say you got you did the program. You got a flipper, and they did their four flips, and you did not even get the buyer side. You just got the investor side. That's that's a hundred. Like I said, if we were an investor club together and we pulled together twelve grand, would we invest twelve thousand, believing like with this kind of certainty that we would get a hundred thousand on the back end? Of course. Yeah. So what we had to do, guys, is we had to lower it down. We encouraged the vendor to lower this to the average referral fee, which was that three years ago. Um, after two years, after two years. Again, you, the, the advantage with doing it with your group is um, during the rollout, you can do it for half of that. So they gave you the forms here. So do, if you want to do it, you pay half of that during the rollout. After the rollout, it's going to be probably that price. Um, Real quick, since I was here the last time they added more to the program, you don't have to pay for it, it's just part of what you get. They made all the social media available to us. We can take their blogs. I, I do this myself. If you look at my website, my blogs are their blogs. I just put my name on it. Kind of cool. Um, they give you 500 bucks if you bring somebody in from another brokerage company. 
uh, we give you well, there's referrals that go back and forth here. Um, usually, um, you can count at least one or two of these. But in any case, contrary to Beverly, she gives you one on one, helps you get through the program. Uh, that's an additional source of support. You can take it as often as you like, and for the whole year, you get access to everything you got. Um, like the webinar, so what I'm doing tomorrow night, every one of them has been recorded. They catalog the same like the database that they give us access to. There's like 200 different recordings. Now, everything's out there. I mean, assisted living. I paid three grand just for that. That's an addition to the training. You don't have to pay for it additionally. They just, that's part of their business. This is what they give us for allowing them to be in our market center teaching the program. Okay, so that's what it cost. If that wasn't there, by the way, if KW paid for this, how many of you would do this strictly because it's how you, you want to use this to build your business model out? All right. Well, obviously, there's cost of these things. So our cost is, that's it. Um, so let me show this because it's actually a little bit, uh, this is their form. I've got to have you write some things in here. Let me hand this out. I've got two more things to show you. And then we can we can do more. I'll let you ask questions and stuff. I have to get going because I have to go to some from daycare, but do you have to fill this form and hand it back to you right now? Well, here, here's what I want to tell you. There's actually we actually do get it for half of that. Yeah. So if you could do me a favor, just hand right in fifteen hundred. Yeah. Uh, can, look, can I go ahead and do this real quick on it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this will save us time later on. All right. So for those of you who are wanting to do this, Zimmer says please choose, and right below it says option one is twenty nine ninety seven. Go ahead and cross off the 2997 and hand right in uh, 1500. So that, that is legitimate. That's the, the break we get for being uh, teaching your program in our market centers. During the rollout. So if you when I come back here next time, it's probably going to be back to the original price, the, their price. Really. All right, so option two, where it says 3597, this is if you want to pay over time. You don't want to pay for you want to pay over time. It, the total is 1800 If you cross off the 3597 and hand right in, 1800 okay? And then that's broken down into two parts. Part one is the, the, the deposit or down payment. That's half of that, too, which is only 300 That's all you had to have to get started, just 300 bucks. that's all. And then and it's 150 a month after that. That's if you do the payment plan option, too. Start to sound a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So um, it's the same program, but just same it's in $1,800 just because you're paying over time. They make it a little bit more. That's about a 20% increase. But it's because right. uh, there's costs associated with right. paying the claims. Like, they don't make you. Um, I mean, if it was me personally, I'd look at my credit card. If my credit card is charging 18%, I would just do option one. Right. But if your credit card is 21%, then you do option two. I will tell you this. So I, have, I have asked another KW question. KW question. Um, how many of you are, if you were thinking of doing this, would you, would you, or you're drawn towards option two, just because it's easier to do? All right. Anyway, those option two, what we ask is if you would please pay it off when you start cashing checks. Does that sound fair? Okay. It's, it's just, we want you to be mindful that to, the, the donors are on today's on the market center, tomorrow on the market center. And the reason they have the head count and check is half of us do option two, and they can't have, um, like, Everybody does option one, we get to add more people into the, into the, into the database, into the headcount. Does that make sense? So if you do option one, it's great. If you can't, do option two, we understand. Okay, so here's the rules. Well, I know you got to go here, but um, yeah. if you could please write your market center ID in the upper right hand corner. The reason is, is. Um, yeah, I think it's 927. You, you can just write um, uh, Douglas Street if you want to. Yeah. But the reason is, is we've had agents come to other people's market centers, and we want to know where you're coming from, so you go against that market center's headcount. Does that make sense? Um, my, what I do personally is I take these and I scan them from your market center because they have your market center's uh, number on there, um, your ID, I guess, internal ID. So real quick, though, I do want to show you. My, my, here, here's my personal opinion. If you're really serious about this, I wouldn't hesitate too long. I understand sometimes you're if you're high D, you just do it. That's what high D's do. You're an action taker. If you're more of the follower, like the S type, your brain's just not going to let you do it. You just got to wait and pray on it and talk to your spouse and we get it. So, but real quick, um, the vendor does actually guarantee their program. I mean, literally for the entire year, not just the six weeks of learning, but the entire year. You literally remove all the risk for it. Okay. All right.
uh, ooh, this is important, community site. Um, they created a site for us to network all of us in rates that's all over North America. Um, you can put your listings on here. You can also trade, you can send transactions. So your investors, they're not just investing up here. If you look at a lot of Canadians, they're going over to Detroit, they're going down to Buffalo, they're going, actually, believe it or not, uh, Texas, where else have I seen Canadians invest? Florida, Georgia. What a million is this is? Let's say you land somebody up here, you're know, like, I just, the money thing, God has it, like a million, a million bucks for a triplex? You can say, you know what, but you can buy a triplex in Georgia for 250000 and send them a transaction, which means you just earned a referral fee. Start to sell them. Let's just help you guys. It's not, it's not a referral program, it's a training program. They just did this for us because we wanted to network on here. Okay? One more thing, and I promise I'll stop. Remember how I told you they give you access to all of their own stuff too while you're going through the training? That here, that, they actually put more in there. I don't want to go to all this because it looks like you're starting to get, get tired of it. <laughs> but 